Wait, I forgot what it was. You did? No, oh no, I think I know it. I okay, know it. I think I know you know it. it. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. I'm going to look through this. See if I can maybe find it. We'll okay. see. We'll see. Wow. Um. <laughs> was this your card, though? That was my card. Really? Yeah. Well, great. <laughs> awesome. Shall we make sure the yeah, camera... Yeah, I mean, yeah. so there we go. There we go. <laughs> so that was your card? Mm hmm Awesome. Well, I found it. Even, uh, yeah. Yeah. Kind, kind, of, kind of weird, right? No, yeah. So I think these cards are going to stay at my feet for the remainder of the show. <laughs> do you know... How to, can you tell me how to do that trick? Yeah, I'll, I'll, t I'll teach later. you. Later? I'll teach you later. I'm uh, Off not that much of a magician, yeah. Oh. Exactly. But you're learning? Yeah. yeah. Getting there. Maybe throughout the show. <laughs> Are you ready to start? Yeah. All right, well, let's do it. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Bowtie Movie Lounge. I'm your host, Jacob Strupek. Joining me today, Catherine Lindsay. Good friend. So, how are you feeling, Kat? Um, I'm feeling pretty good. Pretty good. I'm happy to be here. Happy to be here. Yeah. Well, well, we're happy to have you here. Aww. You know, you're here in the Bowtie Movie Lounge. I and, know. It's like an honor. Well, I'm glad that you feel that <laughs> way because it's an honor to have you as a guest. Aww. And you're, you're now welcome. Just like everyone is here at the Bowtie <laughs> Movie Lounge. Well, anyway, so today, what are we discussing? Oh, we're talking about um, the Darjeeling Limited. The Darjeeling Limited. It's a 2007 film by Wes Anderson. Big, big uh, director to like us at the Bowtie Movie Lounge, at least mm -hmm. for me and Gabe, who I started the show with. Oh, we yeah. take a lot of influence from him. He's so, like one of my favorites of all time. a classic director, yeah. and then he just he belongs where he belongs now, just very re renowned mm -hmm. artist of a director. Definitely. Definitely. All right, well, everyone sit back and relax. We're at the Bowtie Movie Lounge. <laughs> All right, the Darjeeling Limited, or Darjeeling Limited. I've always said both. How do you say it? Darjeeling or Darjeeling? Darjeeling. Darjeeling, it sounds more official. Yeah, it does. It does. It sounds more Indian. But which is correct, though, do we know? I actually don't. I shouldn't. You know, every, <laughs> every time when like, we do the pod, it's like Wait, let me... something, something happens to where it's like, you know, a question is asked, or I ask myself a question, I'm like, Shoot, I, I should wanna, know this, but I don't. I want to Google, like, I want to hear Siri say. You want to hear see it? Yeah, should I pull it up? She'll probably be like, Darjeeling. <laughs> <laughs> probably so. I feel like, I don't know. Darjeeling. See? Oh, Darjeeling. you're Darjeeling. Darjeeling. I don't know. Yeah. I just feel like that's not correct. It, I, I. Because I never really say it in the film. Like, I don't really they hear. They don't it. say it. Yeah, I don't, I've, I didn't hear it at all. Like, said, it's just, you know, the name of the, the train. It's just that's all. That's all it is. Just the name of the train Sorry, and I the title like card. I'm such a noisy guest. No, it's okay. <laughs> we've we've had some pretty noisy people, and well, a few people that we've had on. So it's okay. We'll, we'll start a little hall of fame of noisy guests. <laughs> all right. So Darjeeling Limited, mm -hmm. 2007 film by Wes Anderson. Yes. As I mentioned before, a favorite here. The film stars Owen Wilson, Adrian Brody, Jason Schwartzman, Amara Karan, Waris. Aluaylia and Angelica Houston. Love Angelica Aluaylia Houston. Aluaylia, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> she's, she's, she, like, I feel like as a person, she's just a classic. I mean, I grew up watching her mainly on The Addams Family. Mm -hmm. That's where I really noticed her. Yeah. Um, that's where I grew up with her. Mm -hmm. um, but th this film is written by Wes Anderson, Roman Coppola, and Jason Schwartzman. Yeah, I mean, I feel like he writes a lot of stuff with Roman Coppola, right? They're like partners. Yeah. They are, and then uh, Roman Coppola and Jason Schwartzman, I'm pretty sure, are cousins. Yeah, I know that Jason Schwartzman is, like, technically a Coppola, which yeah. is kind of weird. Same with Nicolas Cage. Exactly. I was about yeah. to ask. Like, so you, you know your stuff. That's I, why you're here. Yeah. Oh, my God. I would love to tell. I, I, I'm I also a big Sofia Coppola fan. Sofia Coppola? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's, she's, I haven't watched a whole lot. I need to watch Lost in Translation. It's amazing. Also, Bill Murray. Bill Murray. Mm -hmm. I guess Definitely. that's uh, where they connect and where he, you know, because yeah. she likes to use him a lot. She does. And also, I would say you need to watch Marie Antoinette. Marie Antoinette. Yeah, that's with what, Kirsten Dunst. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love her. That's right. I, I th that's what I thought was in. I was. It was either her or Kira Knightley. She mm -hmm. played someone. She played another. But she's in like every period piece ever. Yeah, she Keira really Knightley. is. Yeah. yeah, I like her though. We like mm -hmm. her. 
Uh, the film has a $17.5 million budget and globally, as of right now, making $35 million as to date, which is, you know, it That's was actually... impressive. It, was, it did better than I thought it did. For an indie director, I mean, he's not really indie, right. but like, I feel like... He is kind of not anymore, but I feel like he was still kind of indie then. Yeah, a at little that off point. kilter, like a little. But this is this kind of feels like his indie film. Yeah, it does feel very indie. It almost like harkens back in a way to Bottle Rocket. Exactly for me. that same here, which you know we actually did on this pod. But it feels more like it feels more closer to Bottle Rocket. Yeah, because he went from what Bottle Rocket, uh, then he did um, next was was Rushmore. And then after that was Royal Tenenbaums, right? Mm-hmm. Or did I get that wrong? I think it is Royal Tenenbaums. Yeah. And then Life Aquatic. Life Aquatic, which I recently watched. That was the last Wes Anderson film really? that I had to watch. And that was... This was the last one I ever watched. Really? Yeah. Have you seen all of them? Oh, okay. Not going to lie. I couldn't get through The French Dispatch. Same. I, Sorry, Wes Anderson. Yeah, sorry, buddy. I love you, but that was too much for me. Yeah, it was... Uh, it was, like, all, like... It just was lacking the charm of all the other films. It did. It was lacking, uh, I feel like, a connecting story. Yeah, it didn't feel particularly grounded. Yeah, it was like his own love letter to mm-hmm. French journalism, which I never really... I've never gotten into, personally. Yeah, I would just ask Wes Anderson to never write another love letter. Yeah. Please, you know. <laughs> Whereas a lot of those Hate films mail do only. kind of feel. Yeah, exactly. A lot of these films do kind of feel like a love letter in some way, personally, mm-hmm. is how I feel. Um, but yeah, this I'd say this film is, you know, kind of small on the map of like the Wes Anderson world. A lot of people really don't know about it. Um, but I think it's this is a pretty much endeared film by Wes Anderson lovers. Which, I mean, it's a, uh, yeah, I feel like it is a bit of a hidden gem. Like, kind of like Life Aquatic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like it better than Life Aquatic. Really? Also, the soundtrack. I love the soundtrack. Because I already love, like, like how he soundtracks his films, but this Mm -hmm. one is just, like, incredible to me. That's one thing that stood out to me, too, Mm -hmm. was the soundtrack. We can definitely talk more about that, like, a little later on. Or, yeah, later on. Yeah, but, so, overall, like, how do you feel about this movie? Like, you know, what, what you know, how would you describe this? Is this, like, a masterpiece to you? Is it just a good movie? Like, how do you feel about it? It's like a small masterpiece. A small masterpiece. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. I just, I just said, you know, I'd say it's an amazing movie. You know, just kind of like, you know, mm-hmm. piggybacking masterpiece. No, it's weird, because for something that literally, I mean, if you count, like, the short film... Yeah. Hotel Chevalier, or I think that's... Chevalier. Chevalier. As Sierra would probably say. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very American. It does. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I think, like, with that, it's like a film that actually, like, spans continents, mm-hmm. but it still feels so small. It's very grounded on these, like, three brothers. It is. And it, it really focuses in on them, and that's what it's basically built on. Mm -hmm. And don't even get me started on the baggage metaphor. I know. I noticed that this past, this last rewatch where I was really trying to dive into it. Mm -hmm. Well, we're definitely going to be getting to this. Um, I do have an opening question. Mm -hmm. So where does, uh, actually two, Um, where does this film fall on your Wes Anderson's like favorite film list? Okay. So I feel like this one Oh, it's so hard because I really, lo- I really love Wes Anderson, mm-hmm. and like I, I, I feel like also when I think about it, I always forget about Fantastic Mr. Fox and Isle of Dogs, yeah. but those are also incredible films. They are. They um, really are. But I have to say, I, I'm only knocking points because Luke Wilson isn't in it. Oh, uh, that's true. <laughs> Luke Wilson just has that, a special place in my he heart does. in Wes Anderson films, especially from Bottle Rocket and. Uh... I really, I really liked him in Royal Tenenbaums. I love that. Film. The world does need a little more Luke Wilson. I agree, and I feel like um, Wes Anderson kind of stopped using him. Yeah, he did. Stuff. It's kind of sad. I was expecting to hopefully see him in, or did he show up for a split second in French Dispatch? I wasn't. I don't really think he was attention. in it. He did have a real quick uh, scene in uh, Rushmore. Oh, did he? Yeah, he's in it briefly. He plays uh, the teacher's boyfriend 
Oh, I feel like I did know that. I yeah, he's in it so long. real briefly. I know, I've only seen it once. I do want to see that again. We're going to do that eventually on this one. Oh, yeah. We definitely are. Yeah, it's great. No doubt about You're it. You're trying to get through to... all of them, right? At some point. Mm -hmm. I think we should pace it a little more. Yeah. You know, we should pace it. You know, yeah. not do a whole Wes Anderson dump on everybody. Yeah, yeah. Maybe work into Scorsese and... Okay. I definitely want to do a Tarantino film. I've been oh, saying yeah. that for a while now. We're definitely going to have to do a Tarantino film. You can do David Lynch. And then, yeah, we're going to have to do David Lynch. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's just a lot that we're going to have to do. So, I mean, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. But, um, but yeah, so, uh, the la you know, last question is, have you ever been to India or planning on visiting? No, I've never been. I think it'd be really cool, but I don't, it's not like... Like high on my list of priorities. Really? But I, I, if I if I had the opportunity, I would take it. Yeah, it may not be exactly like this movie made it seem, but oh. I think they tried to leave keep it as raw as possible, which is pretty cool. Well, I think honestly, I feel like they don't get like they don't really dive into the culture at all because it's not about Indian culture. And True. I kind of read it like like they're so spiritually bankrupt. Yeah, they are. They literally have to prey on other people's misery to find any kind of spiritual like growth. That's true. Yeah, and that's a good way to say it. I've never thought of it like that. Mm -hmm. Spiritually bankrupt. Yeah, and like I feel like sorry, I'm saying like so much. No, it's okay. Um, Go ahead. But I feel like they they're like the peak of their growth as people is literally watching a little boy die. Yeah. And that just speaks volumes to me that the only way they're able to grow as people is by like witnessing someone else's like misery and tragedy. Yeah. It was a tragedy that had to throw them into, mm -hmm. I guess you could say adulthood. But then I guess it also was a like it kind of closed the chapter on like their dad dying mm -hmm. and like not to like jump the gun on. Yeah, like, no, the that's all good. Movie. Definitely spoiler alerts for the, oh. for the movie. If you haven't seen mm -hmm. it, you should definitely see it by now. Um, you know, I mean, I don't know why people would click on Darjeeling <laughs> Limited, Darjeeling. No, Darjeeling. Darjeeling Dar apparently is the correct way to no, say it. No, you were saying it right the whole time. It was me. <laughs> it just sounds too American. Darjeeling? It does. Yeah, Darjeeling. It does. But anyway, so yeah, definitely check it out if you haven't. I don't know why you're watching or listening to the podcast. <laughs> Not being discriminating, but, um, but no, you're definitely right. Um, that was definitely one thing that I noticed on, um, uh, like watching it this time was with you know i was like noticed whenever they were being kicked off the train mm -hmm. being kicked off the darjeeling limited they had to they were like on the ground they started throwing rocks at it yeah and the way i read that is like they're just being chi like very childish yes. they're almost like throwing tantrums mm -hmm. and it's like they're still kids yes definitely and then the very next scene is like the boys at the bridge scene you know, and that's where the tragedy happens, and they're thrust into having to take care of things. Yeah. And it show it gave Peter, uh, yeah, that's Adrian Brody's character, Peter. Yeah. Uh, it gave him like a taste for life mm -hmm. and the life of his baby, which yeah. is coming. And he, it was like him being like, I actually care for kids now. Mm -hmm. It, it, it kind of took that to show him himself. Well, yeah, I feel like there is nothing like seeing a child die. Yeah. To, like to let you like understand the preciousness of life. Yeah, exactly. And he just could not see that, especially when they were so hell bent on their their father passing. Yeah, um, the father drama is a lot. It me. is. And the I don't know. I just I felt like I really in a weird like I related to the brothers. Like how at the beginning they're all like keeping secrets from each other, right? And they like gossip about the other one, like with like Owen Wilson, and I yeah. find that <laughs> so. Or and like they, then they gossip, like Jason Schwartzman and Adrian Brody gossip together, and they're all just gossiping about each exactly. other with the other one. And like I don't know, as as a as a sister, you, you kind of related yeah. to it. It's like yeah, I'll gossip about this with this sibling, mm -hmm. and then like I'll turn around and do like vice yes. versa. And then how Owen Wilson would just be introducing a new rule 
like after every event that occurred. Yeah, he's like, let's make another agreement. Yeah. I'm I'm probably going to be doing a little too many like Owen Wilson impressions. Uh, there's no such thing as too many Owen Wilson. Yeah, but like, you know, we'll see if you get tired of it or not. <laughs> <laughs> it may happen. But no, uh, what does he say? He's like, let's make another agreement. Can we agree to that? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a pretty good impersonation. Yeah, I appreciate it. I take pride in my impersonations. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I can't really do the others. But you know, I won't. I won't try right now. I don't want to butcher it. I feel like Jason Schwartzman is more attitude than like vocal. Yeah, he That's has. Weird. He has more like. Uh, I'm gonna. I want that. Wait. I want that hostess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I want. Yeah. Oh my God. Creep. Yeah. He he was a little too hard with that, but he was dealing with like the trauma of just breaking up with Natalie Portman, which you see all of that drama, which is really interesting. You see all of that drama and like that oh. kind of personal trauma because they all mm-hmm. come into this with the, kind of their own personal trauma, mm-hmm. like outside of the trauma that they share with their dad dying mm-hmm. and their mom not being there. Mm-hmm. I mean, for Owen Wilson, it's like he disfigured his face <laughs> being in the <laughs> motorcycle wreck. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so stupid. I know it is. He's like, yeah, I was just like driving down the road, <laughs> and then all of a sudden I hit something like a little leaf, <laughs> something like it catapulted me twenty feet. And everything went silent. That was a whole. That was a good monologue mm-hmm. too. It went on for a while. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you had him, and he was like talking about how you know the two hikers had to dig the dirt out of his face and his mouth and ears. <laughs> No, my favorite is also is Jason Schwartzman, like the how he works through his trauma by like writing literally everything exactly as it yeah. happened, and then being no, it's fiction. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the characters in this are fiction. Yeah, they're like okay, you keep telling yourself that. Which I, I mean, I don't know if we want to save like I'll, I'll save that for towards the end because it's like something in the very end that happens where you're like. But uh, oh oh, the story he writes about the, the story uh, he writes and his reaction to like, well, we'll I, I think we should get to that later. Yeah, yeah. What do you yeah. think? What do you think? No, that's fine. We can wait. We can okay, wait. Okay, I just feel I, a little like, treat for the end. Yeah, that's how I'm looking at it right now. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so there's um, so there's like that whole thing, the whole ordeal, um, where they're they have their own trauma and the trauma that they share with their dad mm-hmm. and Adrian Brody, of course. You know, he, you know, you find out that he's as his wife who's having a baby and he's expecting yeah. to get a divorce. Not, you know, how a relationship... Not for any real reason other than his parents. Yeah. He just had a bad example set by his parents. He did. And so he had that. And so that's his personal trauma that he has. Yeah. Well, in a way, not to be like... But, like, it feels like a story of, like, sons paying for, like, the sins of their father. Yeah. But then, like, realizing they don't actually have to carry it with them. No, they don't. Which is like when they leave the, the bags, bags at the end. They have to. They leave the baggage of their mm-hmm. father behind. Mm-hmm. Because that's what's really getting in between them. Yeah. Yeah. It's like their dad was pretty much getting in between them, especially with like the sprinkle of, you know, it's like, is that dad's belt? Mm-hmm. Are those dad's glasses? Are, are those, you still have his prescription then. How can you see? Yeah. No, yeah. like still seeing the world through his dad's eyes. Yeah. Whoa. Metaphor. That's actually pretty good. That was a good metaphor. Like, I never even noticed. I just thought it was like a little bit of like pizzazz that mm-hmm. Wes threw in. It was like, hey, look. But it definitely I think this is comedic. funny. This made me laugh, you know? Whereas I thought it was funny, but then it was like one of those things where like, that's not just funny. That's also a metaphor. Yeah. And like, I would never realize that. Thank you for, <laughs> thank you for like the revelation of that metaphor. Oh, of course. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's like the English and me, like the English major and me. <laughs> I'm just always looking for metaphor Look, and symbolism. I do a little bit of the same. Mm-hmm. Um, I I miss a lot, and it's kind of sad, you know. Especially like we all miss a lot, though. Yeah, but I, like life. I shouldn't have to miss a whole lot when I have a a movie podcast. You know, but, it's a little dangerous. But that's why you have guests. Exactly. And you that is that's why I can't do it by myself. You're always uncovering new things together too. Exactly. I just I just couldn't do that at one point. Yeah. So, you know, I again that that is where it shows. Appreciate yeah. that. But yeah, I mean that metaphor of like, you know, still having his father's prescription in, seeing everything through his dad's eyes, and then like they're just all sharing this trauma. It's just ridiculous, and then it all plays, and like, 
each of their trauma plays to the character of them very well. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, you have the youngest, you know, Jack, Jason Schwartzman, who his, you know, his is like heartbreak from his ex-girlfriend. Yeah. And then you have, you know, of course, Adrian Brody as Peter, who, you know, we just mentioned his and then Owen Wilson, who I'd spent too much time mentioning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Owen Wilson also feels like he has to take care of. Yeah. And he's the, the brothers, oldest, too. Yeah. Which brings me like each role as a brother. Like, so you have Francis, you know, Owen Wilson, who is played you know, by, okay, so Owen Wilson, I, I don't know why I just lost my train of thought there. So, no, but I got it back. So, Francis is the oldest brother, and he mm-hmm. has, like, those tendencies, especially me, who, where you know, yeah. I should probably lay down that I have a lot of brothers. Yeah. And having those brothers and seeing them compared to, like, all the brothers in this film was very well done. Yeah. Because at some point I was kind of like, I don't know, I just feel like one of the brothers, uh, like either Owen Wilson or Adrian Brody, they just didn't fit. But then I was like, no, there's always the one blonde brother, you know? <laughs> there Owen is. Wilson? Yeah. I have one brother and he is the blonde brother. Really? Mm-hmm. He's just he's just the blonde brother? Yes. No, none of the rest of us is blonde, but my brother is. It's like all my brothers. We, we I was blonde at one point. Mm-hmm. I really was. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, we've all had, like, you know, we all have, like, an Owen Wilson in our family. But then we also all have, like, an Adrian Brody, Mm -hmm. a brother who's just very different than the rest. Yeah. Because I feel like Owen Wilson and and Jason Schwartzman's characters, they were both very similar. Well, it was weird. So, like, I mean, my, I, I'm the middle child, but I'm also the third child. Right. But so like I was sitting there being like, why do I feel like a mix of of um, Peter and um, Jack? Jack. I was yeah. like, like I, I feel like the. You feel middle, like the middle and the youngest. And the youngest because just because like there's just a bit yeah so it's weird also I am like yeah I'm always like writing down my life like right that, so it kind of so but kinda then I feel like, very out of place all the time kind of like mm-hmm. kind of like uh, how Adrian Brody does mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with it he's just he doesn't want to be there. He's expecting to be leaving soon yeah. with everything in his life, honestly. Yeah. Like, which is the... Like just know, waiting for the other shoe to drop constantly. Pretty much. That's a And that's for everything a to phrase, just fall right? apart. I think so. Shoe to drop? I think, yeah, that, like, yeah, okay. is what they say in the in the film. Do they say that in the film? I don't know. I feel like they do. Maybe they do. I don't... Huh. Because they do throw, like, a lot of, like, old farmers, like... Some, like, some, like isms. Yeah, some isms, yeah. Isms out there. <laughs> Yeah, I'm big into isms, me too. so it really always speaks to me. Me too. I don't. I wish I could keep and hold like a bunch of isms. Oh, I'm the worst. I'm always coming at people with isms. <laughs> That's my dad. He just has like all of his, and like I just can't ever hold them. No, I'm like a middle aged man. I am too. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it annoys people sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, so like I have like my notes here. Um, um, yeah, that's right. That's going to be a quote for later. Um, but like like I said, like all brothers just have very individual personalities, mm-hmm. which is like what I see with all my brothers. It's yeah. like we're all di- we're very different, especially as an older brother. Mm-hmm. I did kind of feel like Owen Wilson, you know, I felt like the, you know, he did a really good job of being the oldest. Like, all right, you know, I'm going to make sure I'm going to order for you. You know, I don't really do it to that extent because, you, you know. You don't order I'm, for your brothers? No, I don't. But I'm kind of, I kind of like throwing like, hey, uh. You know, the, uh, I'll do, I'll, you I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not going to do, yeah, metaphorically, like, just kind of like, hey, look, order for these you. are really good. I think you should get it, you know? Yeah, I think you, kinda I, kind of like that. Because you, it's like, you know better. It's like, I, you know, to myself, I do pretty much, you know, but mm-hmm. like, you know, like I just, uh, mainly went into my, the bank with my brother recently because yeah. I kind of had like what Owen Wilson felt is like they were almost incompetent. So he had to be there because he, he can, he can do it. Um, no, also, I think there's, like, a line he has where, like, they're just talking, and he's like, well, wouldn't you say that I raised you? Yeah. Like, I raised us? Wouldn't you say that I raised us? Yeah, and he's like, like, did I raise us? Yeah, and then no one responds to him. And there, It's just kind of like, maybe so. Also- That's how I read it. How did you read that line? I was like, I think he thinks he did. Yeah, he definitely thinks he did, but then did the other brothers think so? I, no, and I don't think he actually did. I think he just- 
I think it's very, no offense, but it's very older brother to have a chip on your shoulder. It is. About all the times you had to like, t- like, like babysit your younger siblings or something. Trust me, yeah. And just because <laughs> you like watched over them doesn't mean you raised them. And I, you yeah. know what I mean? And I think there's a bit of a disconnect there. That's true. I definitely feel like I, you know, I do have to watch myself mm-hmm. in that way. I do have to like be like, okay, you didn't raise them. You definitely had like some things where you helped them get mm-hmm. through life, you know, a certain way. I was more of the one like, I was like the social pioneer for all my brothers yeah. and my sister. And like, okay, look, you're going to be laughed at if you do it like this, okay? So whatever you do, don't <laughs> do it like this, all right? So it was just kind of like, yes. like that. And you see like that in Owen Wilson. No, definitely. Yeah. But it's weird because I think he is the most socially incompetent <laughs> of them all. Exactly. Like, it's a pretty funny. He's, like, the it least, is. like, self-aware. That's true. Yeah. Because we have to be pioneers, you know? Yeah. Also, <laughs> We're going to be pioneers till like, we die, you know? No, I really also loved when the train gets lost, and he's, like, he's, like, we can't, like, we ha- can't, haven't located us yet, or, he's like, like do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, and he's, like, we haven't located us yet. He's, like. He's like, that means something. Oh, you know yeah, I mean? that's right. He's like, he's like we haven't located. I, I loved that. He, like, and the, there he goes. He's looking for all those those, those analogies. Isms, yeah. yeah. He's at, like taking all the isms that he finds mm-hmm. throughout the movie. And then he's taking those as like analogies, which mm-hmm. is pretty cool. Um, And that's, I wonder if that's like an, I'd do that too, personally. Mm-hmm. No, he's just looking for signs. Yeah, exactly. Constantly. For omens. As Owen Wilson would say, looking for omens. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no. Um, I just I love the dynamic between all three of them. Yeah, they they all play off of each other very well. They do. They're perfectly casted too. I think they look nothing alike though. They do. That was my big thing. Where like Owen will well not Owen Wilson. Um, I feel like Adrian Brody and Jason Schwartzman could be. Yeah, they could be like cousins. Yeah, they look them. almost more like cousins. But at the same time, I feel like all three of them do look like they could be Angelica Houston's children. Them too. And so them that too. makes, like, at least those two. Owen I Wilson, c- kind of hard s- to see. Mm, but I feel like it could. It could happen. Yeah. It could. So that's where I was thinking earlier. Maybe Luke Wilson instead yeah. of Owen Wilson? You think? I think in, like, visually it would have Visually, been yes. Sense. But I don't think Luke think, Wilson could have played that part. Yeah, I don't think so either. You know, as much as like we love Luke Wilson, I will. I'm like the I'm such a Luke Wilson fan. Mm-hmm. Like he is my he's like one of my fa- one of my favorites of all time. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely want to see more of him. As I said earlier, yeah. <laughs> no, he's definitely great. Um, but yeah, I mean, keeps going. So, where what do we want to talk about next? I mean, there is like, then they get it kicked off the train classic yeah we've kind of been like all over the place yeah we? <laughs> but i feel like that's the best way to do it if yeah. people want to straight like run through the movie they should just watch the movie it just yeah pretty much <laughs> pretty much and that's what like you know i've tried to stop doing is going straight through the movie because we just kind of talk about each and every single scene yeah but there's really like a lot in this film well, the snake i'm sorry i yeah. feel like we need to give some attention to the snake they bring some. on board oh my god that just I feel like that speaks volumes about, like, their entitlement. Yeah. Because also, I think, like, something you have to consider in this film is, like, class privilege. That's true. Like, it's, you can really tell that these are, like, wealthy boys. Yeah, they are. Mm-hmm. Spe- like, right as they walk on, Ooh. you know, they all have the Mark Jacobs bags. Mm-hmm. Um, they all, you know, they're all, he's like, instantly like, here, you can have my shoes or my, you know, he's like, uh, the $3,000 loafers. Yeah. The $3,000 loafers and the $6,000 belt that he has. Yeah. Also, um, I, they're the drugs. Like, yeah. I think that's another thing to consider. They're like high the whole movie. Yeah. Getting high off of cough syrup. Like painkillers. <laughs> like, yeah. And the THC or whatever they have. Yeah. I, that, <laughs> I think that's also something like, it's funny. Uh, they want to have this spiritual journey. And part of that involves, like, just lots of drugs. Yeah, I guess that's how you do it, you know? I, I don't know. Is that is that how you do it? I guess. And then, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I've never been to India, so I can't really say. Yeah, because uh, the girl Rita gave uh, Jack the drugs, too. Oh, yeah. They really trip out on. Mm-hmm. 
But then I think it's who's the guy on the train? Uh, the guy from yeah, he's in like a lot of other. Uh, Chief Steward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chief Steward. Yeah, the Chief Steward. Yeah, when he's like, you don't have a prescription for these, so it's like uh, not yeah. okay. He's like, I nearly died. <laughs> Yeah, no, that was so funny. And then, like, when they're, like, lurking outside the door, watching it go down, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, they don't realize they can see him. Mm -hmm, mm Mm-hmm, He just kind of opens it. Yes, yes. (laughs) And, like, oh, it's classic. But I don't know. I think that's... I Yeah, I'm just realizing, like, they were high the entire movie. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Which I feel like makes their actions make sense a Mm -hmm. little bit more. They're just kind of carefree. Yeah, like who brings, who buys a poisonous snake? Yeah. But then I feel like it's also like they do it because they can. Yeah, that's true. And they don't. No really, one can stop them. And they're not thinking about others. They don't care. Yeah. They're not thinking about the consequences too. Which is why, like Adrian Brody, isn't ready to be a dad at the start yeah. of the film. That's actually a good way, and like that's like a little bit of a realization I just had. Whereas, like you know, they don't think about the consequences. At least Adrian Brody. They are the three most selfish people. They are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then it's almost like Owen Wilson's character doesn't really realize it, too. Yeah. You know, he's probably the least selfish, I feel like. But he, he still has, like, a sense of, like, entitlement. He's well, too busy actually, patting himself on the back for raising wait. everyone. That's true. I, I took his goofiness for, you know, humbleness. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I understand what you mean. It does kind of ground him a little bit more. It does. It kind of shows his humanity a little bit. But I think they're just all, like, all three of them are very selfish. No, without a doubt. That's <laughs> true. I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't know why I didn't, I thought about that, about <laughs> Owen Wilson's character. I but think you just love Owen Wilson. I think so. I think I just have an, <laughs> an unconditional love for him. He was, like, yeah, he actually filmed uh, not too far from here, too. New, for what? For a new Disney film, I think that's coming out. So I really oh. wanted to, I really wanted to meet him, but I didn't get to. I know he was in um, the Loki TV show. Yeah, I don't think it's that. One. Okay, because that was Disney. Yeah, it was Disney. He was actually really good in that. I was so he glad was. he was in that. I actually really like that show. I'm not a big Marvel head. But oh really? I loved that show. It was really well done. Yeah, I don't like Marvel movies or. But and then I, Owen I, Wilson definitely like carried a lot of it too. Yeah, made it interesting. But um, Tom Hiddleston was really good too. He was. I, I was, but I mainly, like, I, oh my God, sorry. I'm like, thoughts are everywhere. It's all good. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not Marvel, but like, I liked WandaVision too. WandaVision was good. So good. It was good. Maybe we, what, we might have to do those sometimes. Oh, WandaVision? Yeah. Yeah, that, WandaVision or Loki. Yeah, that'd be cool. Or maybe like some sort of like recap of mm-hmm. like everything when they're coming out with another. Season. That would be cool. Maybe, yeah, we'll maybe do something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, get back one with uh, the Darjeeling Limited. Yeah. Um, but that like was also like an interesting uh, thing with the snake. Mm-hmm. Like they brought a snake on board. It literally had a skull and crossbones. Yeah. It's like okay. it's like they brought that on board, and like, what metaphor is that? Because this movie, like this, it's filled with metaphors. It's like they're their own worst enemies. Exactly. Yeah. And it's like they're bringing it to harm, and they're harming other people, too, yeah. with their actions. Yeah, the, ways, the way they poison themselves yeah. affects other people. And, like, with Adrian Brody, like, leaving his, he's going to be leaving his, his wife, you know, or mm-hmm. he's not happy about the son that he's having. See, I don't know. I didn't read it that way. I didn't read it as, like, he's not happy. I think he's just so out of his element. He just yeah. doesn't know how to react. He's also, it's like, it's not like he's planning on leaving his wife. Right, that's it's true. It's just that he can't imagine a marriage that doesn't end in divorce. Uh, that's, that's true. It's like, I don't know, I guess I it's just how I read it. it. Yeah, no, well, yours does make more sense. Because <laughs> like, I, whenever like I was watching, I was like, oh, he just doesn't want to be married. You know, but like he, you know, it makes more sense that he just expects everything to go wrong because he's had such a poor example yeah you, yeah you mentioned that earlier and that, was, that makes a lot more sense yeah um but yeah no uh and then of course you know just everything is kind of hurting each other and then mm-hmm. uh owen wilson just acting on a whim is just kind of hurting them too yeah. kind of like they're it's tainting their relationship a little bit it feels like which mm-hmm. ultimately turns out to be the best thing to happen to them yeah 
Um, you know, but so like all their actions have like some sort of consequence, mm-hmm. whether it's it's good and then like and with especially with Adrian Brody saving the little boy. Yeah. Or at least attempting to it like it made him realize so like, you know, they all do little things and like bad people, just a dysfunctional person, mm-hmm. you know, uh, like however you want to look at that or however you want to use that can have like some good qualities and hidden gems to them. Yeah, I agree. I also think like, oh my god, I literally I need to start writing this down. Okay. <laughs> Wait, I just okay, I completely just blanked. It's all it's all good. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's all good. It's all good. I feel bad. No, um, I remember what I was gonna say. What? I feel like up until now their actions haven't had consequences, which huh. is like why they're so shocked when they're kicked off the train after they brought a poisonous snake on. Board. Right. I kind of think it's like they. Th- They've, like, spent their whole lives being able to get away with everything. And they're kind of reaching, like, a point where they can't keep getting away with everything. Right. And, like, their selfishness is no longer an option. I guess that's what I have to say. That's actually a a good point. That makes a lot of sense. And, like, it ties in. Yeah. You know, it's like they have to be shown a hard hand, Mm too. You kind of have to actually be disciplined. Because one thing I noticed kind of felt like a little... uh, of like I guess a plot hole almost, mm-hmm. which is where he's like the chief, yeah, you know, like the actor who is from uh, chief Life Stewart. Aquatic, Chief Stewart, yeah. He was like, you know, I'm kicking y'all off at the next stop. Yeah, he doesn't, you know, because no. it shows them praying again, and they're like in a mosque or something. Don't they get lost though before they get kicked off? Like they don't know where they are. Yeah, that or happens. Maybe, I I'm like wait I'm like trying to. Piece office. everything together. Yeah. No, but you're right. He doesn't kick them off immediately. Yeah. I don't know. Like, well, it changes from we're kicking you off to you're confined to your compartment. Yeah. That's true. And then they're not even confined to their compartment. But he still said, I'm kicking you off. And he doesn't. Yeah. It, like, just keeps getting, like, they're, yeah. And they finally, like, that's when, like, them macing each other, <laughs> which is a great scene. It's like, I love you, but I'm going to mace you in the face. <laughs> And I feel like that's representative of, like, their relationships. Entirely. Yeah. I love you, but I'm going to mace you in the face. Exactly. Like, haven't they been doing that this whole film? That's pretty much, like, what they have been doing, just mm-hmm. more with, like, emotional... You know, emotional not, not macing? Li- not literally. <laughs> emotional macing. An emotional mace. Because, I mean, also, like, the hard part in that scene to watch is when <laughs> he throws the belt at Francis... Like when Peter, like Adrian Brody, like yeah. he's, he's like, here, take this back. And then like pelts him in the face with it. <laughs> he starts bleeding and like attacks him. <laughs> like that's how like the whole thing started. No, yeah. Also, now I'm just thinking back to like when they're in the like temple praying. It's like about the belt again. Yeah. I think you already brought that up. But. No, w- wait, what were you going to say? Because like, I don't. About like how he's like, is that my belt? Like, is that my belt? He's like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, ask next time. And then the whole, like, You do pettiness. do a good Owen Wilson. I, I, you know, I definitely have not practiced, like, just walking around it's my good. house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I definitely did not do that with Morgan Freeman, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe next time. Whenever we do a Morgan Freeman movie, I'll, uh, like, Shawshank or something. I'll just... I'll just I've do. never seen Shawshank, oh, and really? I know I need to. I know I need to. I feel so bad for not... That is a classic one. Yeah. We're going to have to do that one. But I do... Well, just because they're by the same director and both Stephen King-like novels that are not horror, uh, I like... Wait, who directed Shawshank Redemption? Oh, shoot. What's his name? I'm trying to think. I can't remember his name. I'm Googling it. Yeah, try that. Because I've never seen it, so I'm not sure. Same director did The Green Mile, which I personally like a little better. I've never seen The Green Mile. Green Mile. They're both very long. Frank Darabont. Yeah, Frank Darabont. I've never heard of him. Yeah, he he's mainly like really famous for those two. Uh, What else did he do? Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Oh, he did that. Interesting. I need to go back and like look at his filmography. I feel like that's not a mainstay of his. I gotta... No, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely the Shawshank. Mist. Oh, he did the Mist. That's another Stephen King. Oh, uh, he developed. In... Oh, sorry, I'm not going into. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Well, we can we can stay on the Darjeeling. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> well, I mean, we, we've gotten the train has gotten lost. The, tra- the train has gotten lost. <laughs> We, ha- which, we haven't been what, able to locate what, what, ourselves. Which, this, you know, that means we should probably talk about, don't you see? We should probably talk about that scene. They like, the whole scene where they're, he's like, you know, he's organized a little too much of this trip. Yeah. I was just trying to do my Owen Wilson, like, I was trying to do an, a, an Owen Wilson quote, like, that he says in that same scene. I don't know what I'm saying right now. <laughs> no, they're funny, though, when they get lost. Yeah. We haven't found ourselves, or whatever they say. He's, yeah. He's just reading into too much. And ev- I feel like everything they do, he's like, this is the most spiritual thing. This yeah. is the most spiritual thing. But actually, the thing that has the most impact is literally when they see that boy die. And he didn't, yeah. like, I don't remember him being like, this is the most spiritual thing. Weren't they kicked off the train when that happened? Yeah, they were kicked off the train, and then that's where it shows them, like, kind of walking down the beaten path. Yeah. And they, that's where they go ahead and like they see the boys and that's where he's like, look at these assholes. Yeah. And all of a sudden like they're just kind of creepily staring at them (laughs) for whatever reason. And all of a sudden like, bam, like tragedy strikes, you know, that's where they jump into action. That's the most selfless and the most like mature Mm -hmm. thing that we've seen of them like the, throughout the whole movie. Yeah. And especially like where, you know, you know, Adrian Brody's like really trying to his all he's got and his best to save the boy. And can't. And then like I love that shot, like the transition mm-hmm. where like it, you know, the whole wrath like falls and like totally capsizes. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, just it's a you know, a shot of uh Jason Schwartzman like just running through. Yeah. You know, and it like something's not good. Yeah. You know, it the whole movie changes then. It does. And also the Color palette changes a little bit. It does. It goes from these jewel tones where it's like a very, I think think it starts off like it's a very Western way of seeing India and Indian culture. And then suddenly after this death, it's all like whites and like. Yeah, that's true. mm -hmm. A little more blue. A little more blue. It has a little bit more of like a a sky blue. Yeah. That's how I kind of see it. No, yeah, it just kind of shifts. And I feel like, yeah, turning point of the film. Until, Until like the flashback. Which we'll get to. Uh, I did want to stay on like this, the tra- you know the tragedy scene real quick. Mm-hmm. But like, especially when like that first shot of Adrian Brody walking out, and he's like, "I lost him. Yeah, I couldn't save him." You can just see it in his face where he like he's taking this really hard. Yeah, and taking it to heart, which like that's like you know showing right there like just how he really feels about it. Mm-hmm. And it's just you know it's real you know real sad and he's like okay but like here's character development. This is mm-hmm. what we've been wanting to see out of these characters. But then I also feel like it feeds into their like entitlement and stuff. Is like literally he has to watch a little boy die. Yeah. Like literally someone has to like lose their life for him to change. He was smacked in the face with like just a, a like a sad reality. But but at the same time it's like I don't know. I just feel like it's like really frustrating that he has to watch someone die like that someone has to die for him to change right i don't know if that makes a do you, like, I, I see what you're i see what you're saying you know it's like that's what it took why couldn't it take anything else like why couldn't it take a smaller consequence mm-hmm. why couldn't it have been in, like more humbled in a different way and then also it feels like that that tragedy becomes his more so than it becomes his family's right you know what I mean? Like the That's love true. was family. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. He was, it was like, he was more distraught than like mm-hmm. almost like his own, you know, the boy's own, own dad, dad was, mm-hmm. which, you know, was also hard to watch. Uh, that oh, actor, awful. Efron Khans, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Is his, that actor's name. He's yeah. in a lot. He's like America's go-to guy for an Indian role. <laughs> he's in like Jurassic World and okay. he's, uh, Life of Pi. Such, such oh, Life of Pi is good. Yeah, uh, that same actor plays oh, okay. the older version of Pi. Okay, it's been forever since I've seen that film. Really great. Talk, is... talk about metaphors. Yeah, it's just one that giant one, metaphor. Yeah, that's pretty much all it is, which is <laughs> crazy. Um, but yeah, um, that guy did really good, uh, that actor. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, that's pretty much the turning point. There's also a lot to see within... Like those scenes showing yeah. kind of each brother, and the biggest one, like the biggest theme there, was when Adrian Brody's just kind of sitting there staring at this baby, mm-hmm. and he's just kind of sitting there like with the other people, but like they're you know trying to communicate with him. Yeah. He just doesn't know. He's just 
so transfixed on this baby <laughs> and he's just kind of rocking it and, you know it's like kind of like he's he doesn't want to anything to happen to this baby but then he's you can tell he's thinking about the baby he's about to have back home <laughs> you know yeah no i'm i like think he becomes ready for fatherhood yeah in that whole segment and also when they leave behind their baggage yeah. That's when he's really able to be like, I can be a father now. Right. Is when he no longer has to carry the weight of like what his father put on him. Yeah, and like the influence that he had yeah. from his father. It's like, I've like lived and I've learned my own, my own way. Yeah, definitely. So that's, you know, that's, I love things, especially like, you know, fatherly things mm-hmm. like that. But, um, but yeah, even like uh, Francis was just kind of like, it was just there laying, and a little boy just like, you know, was just there staring at him. And just I think poked him at one point. Yeah. And he's just kind of like there. He's like, I'm just here. You know, I'm just living right now. He's not so concerned about what where he's going, where he's been. Yeah. It's just like he's finally, learned to relax. Yes. Yes. And and then I I don't know. They all they all learn their lesson. The one who I feel like learns their lesson the least though is um. Jack. Oh, is Jack? Yeah. That's true. He learns his lesson later. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's, like, the one I was, like, waiting to do. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, in that scene, he's just, for Jack, mm-hmm. you know, Jack, he's there. He's he's the one, like, kind of doing, like, the flower and kind of prepping for the funeral. Mm-hmm. And he's just kind of there. He's just, he's kind of learned to let go with, like, his own things. He's just, like, not worrying about his ex so much, basically. Yeah. And, you know, pretty much getting away like he was doing the whole, you know, on the whole time on the train, mm-hmm. you know, with Rita. And he's just there like, you know, I'm just I'm just going to be here. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing as as Francis. Yeah. But uh but yeah, no. Um I love when they're invited to the funeral. Mm-hmm. You know? And it's yeah. like they get on the bus. They like they first think they're like something's going on. Like the boys are like pointing and stuff. Yeah. That's always like a, I guess a red herring almost. Yeah. Where like you're like, uh oh, something like bad's about kill to happen. Like they're gonna kill them or something. Like they're yeah. Like, they're, it's like a confrontation of sorts. Yeah. Like something. Something's up. They're angry at them or something. Yeah. Like the mobs outside waiting with machetes and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Pitchforks and torches. Exactly. Yeah. And so they're good. They're waiting for like their execution, basically. <laughs> well, they come. They come to realize that they're just they're invited to the funeral. So they're seen almost as family. Mm-hmm. And so there we go. It's like Wes Anderson's classic thing about a dysfunctional family. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, bam, like, they're being accepted as a family. Yeah. I don't and know, also, how, how do you see that? They're also able to, like, relive the funeral situation mm-hmm. and not have it be as much of a disaster as their dad's funeral. Right. That's and so true. They're given, like, um, a second chance, I feel like. Yeah. And so then they're also given a second chance in their relationship as brothers. I really like, I admire like the, that sh- like long tr- shot of mm-hmm. them coming out. And uh, shoot, what's the song playing? I, I forget what song was playing. Oh, let me just pull up the soundtrack. It was a, it was a definitely a, a, I'm pretty sure it was a Rolling Stones song. Play with fire. But Play that's when fire. they're visiting their mom, I thought. Yeah, I'm pretty, I think it is actually. Mm-hmm. I forget. Is it? Wait. St- I'm getting it all mixed up. Strangers by the Kings? It may be, actually. I don't know. I gotta say, I do love This Time Tomorrow at the beginning. This Time Tomorrow? Incredible choice. That's my, that's where, like, I first heard that song. Really? I definitely went and was like, I really like this song. Oh, it's amazing. I'm gonna go, like, save it and add it to my playlist and stuff. Yeah, I, yeah. And then I also love how they, like, throw a curveball. You think it's, like, a Bill Murray film. Yeah. And it's not. It's not. He just, like, is gone until they're, like, (laughs) showing all the different people. Yeah. Which, yeah. yeah, we'll definitely get into that uh, after we talk about the mom scene. But, um, yeah, no, I did, I, I really wanted to, like, say how much I love that shot of them coming out, like, single file, mm-hmm. prepping for, like, I love all the co- colors. Yeah. And all the... Wow, it's like these colors against, like, this white. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And it's like, you know, they're out in the middle of this desert, and it, it, but everything's still vibrant. Yeah, and also, like, how different it is. In, like, a, a funeral in the U.S. Yeah, which it does, like, a full-on 
like exact mm -hmm. cut. It's like like they're like the same kind of like position, but then it cuts mm -hmm. to them being in what seemed like New York, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's what I kind of read it as. Yeah. And so like they're there and like they're all in black instead of the white. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was kind of weird. It's kind of a strange cut. I remember the first time I watched it, I was like, wait, what's happening? <laughs> Like where where are we within the timeline? Mm -hmm. Like what's happening right now? Um, do you think the placement of the scene was effective? Like, do you like it where it is the flashback? Um, I don't know where else it would have been. Yeah, true. I do. Just I really like you know where it you know how it plays in with everything. Mm -hmm. Um, I do like that it's a funeral scene on top of another funeral yeah. scene kind of shows the contrast between their outlooks on death. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, th you know, mainly with like the vibrant and the like setting of the kind of Hindu culture, it seemed yeah. more of like a celebration of life. Yeah. And then, it's like, then, like learning grieving. to let go. Yeah. And, uh, especially, I mean, the dad still like collapses in the water as they're all kind of bathing in. Yeah. You know, it's like there's, it's still grief. But it's not as held on to, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's how, like, you know, I look at funeral a lot of times. It's more of a celebration of life. Yeah, definitely. So. Also, just like the difference of um, the, their funeral. It's a it's sons losing their father, mm -hmm. and then that one is a father losing their son. His yeah. son. Which I feel like That's also, true. Yeah. And so then they're also able to see, like, a father's love in maybe a way that you can't see it when, like, if you're around, like, with, you, like, you, I don't know how to, like, phrase that. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I do see what you're saying. Maybe they're using, like, him as an example for what they wanted in mm -hmm. a dad, but then, like, we don't really know. It sounds like he was still a good dad to each of them individually. Yeah. Not really as like keeping them together as brothers yeah. and like loving all of them, but he had his own individual love to each mm -hmm. one. They are, of course, really competitive for their father's love. Yeah. You know, as it sh shows. And do you think that also has something to do with their mom? And like how yeah. their mom is like very absent. Yeah. And they are not her priority at all. Right. Which, you know, definitely ties in. Yeah. And then you would think like you would be more competitive for the parent. Who does have love to give you and like attention to give you, you'd be more competitive for that. Right. That's true. And so I feel like their dad definitely was like a loving figure, but they were still so hell bent on the fact that he was gone. Mm -hmm. You know, he was, you know, taken from him. Yeah. And they weren't looking at like what they can take from him, mm -hmm. but they were holding on just a little too tight, definitely. basically. I don't know. But yeah, I like what you said like about the contrast between. Sons lo losing their father, and then, you know, a yeah. father losing his son. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, uh, I like that sharp cut uh, from the the funeral that they're at to yeah. the year before with their dad. Yes, that was a good cut. I think so too. Also, like, I don't know. It then makes it make sense, like, like how what happened in the past is affecting where they've been the entire film. Right. And how this is a catalyst for change, like the yeah. the current funeral. Yeah. It was showing like how they should have maybe taken their father's funeral. Yes. You know, actually taking the time to really be there, not focusing on the fact that their mom was not there. Yeah. And like who's getting what and like right. who. Yeah. They were too worried about the car. They were yes. more worried about a physical yes, it, thing. And they've been worried about that throughout the whole film. Yeah. They were worried, worried about more physical things rather than, yeah, okay. And it's we're not. Figuring this, this out. Yeah, and then once they're able to just get rid of the baggage. Yeah. Which another physical thing, they're fine. Right. So they just, you know, I guess they just really had to take, you know, what they learned instead. They had to, but I like films where, you know, like it's shown in, I uh, name drop another movie, Onward. You know, did you watch that? It's okay. What's that? It's uh, the new Pixar movie with Chris oh, Pratt yeah, and no, uh, Tom Holland. I didn't see it. I liked it. Okay. It, you know, it definitely wasn't like the best Pixar movie, okay. but it was still like, you know, <laughs> a brotherly can have almost like a fatherly like 
You know, he, yeah. could, he could teach you like, be, like a father. He yeah. could be like a father role model. A father figure. Yeah. Is a father figure? That's a better way to put it. <laughs> I'm trying too hard over here. <laughs> but uh, no, that's kind of like what's happening in this too. Is like they're learning to have to learn with each other and be with each other. Definitely. I don't know. Yeah, you're, you're really hitting the nail on this one. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. <laughs> that, that, that was good. That was like very radio hostess thing. Yeah. Yes, some more. <laughs> um, but yeah, then we can move on to the mom scene where they actually decide mm. to pack up. Uh, oh, wait, before that, when they're at the bus stop the second time waiting for the bus. Yeah. And all the people are coming. It's like just shot, shot. And it's like almost comedic. Mm-hmm. Well, they're just being surrounded by these people. Yeah. You know, I, may, I think it had to do where he was like, please tell them, let them know that I, I had him, you know, the whole time until he went under the rocks. Yeah. You know? And so, like, they definitely, and they all, like, gave their respects to him and they, like, wished them well. Mm-hmm. on their way and so to get to the airport yeah that's where they went and that's where you can really see the change yeah coming and like where they're actually maturing there's actually like headway being made mm-hmm. you know where especially where peter calls his wife it was all really quick yeah no and also like i feel like when they leave they're they're ready to leave yeah they it's not like at the beginning, how Jason Schwartzman is like, oh, if something, if I want to leave, I'm just gonna leave whenever. Yeah. And then Adrian Brody's like, well, you can't just leave me here alone. Right. And blah blah. blah. But then they get to a point where like they're all okay with just leaving. They're there. Together. They're there because ready they've, to leave. Well, yeah, because they've they've been there. Right. They've been present, so they're ready to go where like they're supposed to be. Well, everything seemed to fall apart on them. You oh know, yeah. Like they they got kicked off the train. Everything was going, so they were just like, you know, we're just leaving. Mm-hmm. But I do like where they get there. And like you mentioned, the two youngest brothers were like, you know, before they were like, we're just going to leave. Oh, and then when they're like, well, you can hold on to our passports. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that part where they're like, they're, they're safer with you. Yeah, they're able to finally trust each other. Yeah. It shows like their growth together as brothers yeah, as, and as individuals. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, like they, like they're, they are a unit. Yeah. And being strong together makes them like stronger in their own lives. Right. Which, you know, it, was, it took a whole movie for them to kind of figure that out. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of think the movie's coming to an end, you know, like they're not going to mm-hmm. see their mom, mm-hmm. which is why I needed to jump into this before jumping into the mom scene, <laughs> because they're both, they're all ready to leave, but they're, yeah. wa- they're boarding the plane, you know, their bags are already like on the little carrier. Mm-hmm. And they're like, you know what? Screw this. We're going to see mom. You know, yeah. we're this far. Might as well. Yeah. And sure enough, they like go to see their mom. Well, I think they're a lot like more ready to experience adventure too. Yeah. They've been kind of primed for it. Right. Like it's like. That's true. The, instead of like coming up with reasons not to do something, I think they're way more being like, why not? Yeah, we're here. Like, because like you have Adrian Brody, who's no longer like. I shouldn't have a ch- child because it's more I'm having a child. Yeah. Like it just, it's like this it's overall like, shift in attitude. It's like they're accepting the fact that they're where they are. Mm-hmm. Which I said that a little too much about like the whole scene where they're individually just after the tragedy of like mm-hmm. the boy, they're, you know, they're kind of, they're like, everything's stopped. We're here now. Well, I think it also ties in like the idea of like, even if you're not where you want to be, you can still like enjoy and make the most of where you are. Right. That's true. And that's that's where they figure that out mm-hmm. pretty much. Yeah. You know. So it's it's I love watching character growth and I think Wes Anderson yeah. does like the best with that. Yeah. He really does. I I think he makes these like kooky characters. Yeah. And they like almost seem like very cartoonish. Mhm. But he's able to like I don't know, they just feel so human. They do. It's weird. It's a weird balance is, he strikes. It is a weird balance, but he somehow pulls it off in the most satisfactory, yes. like satisfying way. Uh, he makes very satisfying films. He does. Like visually. Just aesthetically. Plot. Yeah. And then just like how they're quirky, but like yes. not over the top quirky. Yeah, it's just and the so, right amount of quirk. And then it sh- like all that kind of like shows in like these few minutes of like mm-hmm. when they're at their airport. You know, is when they're leaving the the funeral, yeah. they're at their airport, and then now they're back on their way to their mom. 
which mm-hmm. uh, we can like talk about the the whole mom scene and then them kind of like seeing more. He kind of show them like when they're on that bike. They're all in the all three of them are like on that one bike. Mm-hmm. Even my brother's like, "Well, that's got to be hard to drive." <laughs> I, I think it was Owen Wilson driving. Like, the, oh, oh, you of course. Oh, wait. Who, and then, right? Yeah, I think he is because his accident involved a motorcycle. Well, yeah, and he was also and they trying were trusting to, him. He was trying to kill himself when he when he crashed his motorcycle. Yeah, which I also think is important to note. Wait, I I forgot about that. Yeah. Whoa! And so now he found like a new taste for life. Mm-hmm. And then like I love like we didn't really talk a whole lot about that scene. We'll talk a little bit more about like that. <laughs> um. But uh, no, like that's cool. Like I just, I'm now realizing that they're letting him drive after he's like had a disfigured face because of like he, he crashed. He purposefully on mo- crashed his motorcycle. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. And they're like, we're trusting him with our lives. Yeah. And and they're now it's also like a visual like we're now seeing India. Well, I also feel like like throughout the film, Owen Wilson, even if he is like an, an inherently selfish, his character is inherently selfish at least at the beginning. He's still trying his best, despite his flaws, to like right. make everything best for everybody. Yes, yes, yeah. So Even if he's misguided. Yeah, he's misguided. That's kind of what I guess. That's why I thought he was like the least selfish. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, is because he really did have like a good heart. Also, I think he's putting on like the biggest smile when he's the one who's like in the most pain. Oh, you know, because like he's the only one that's tried to kill himself. Yeah. But he seems to be the happiest. Right. That's true. Yeah. He seems the most content with his life. Mm-hmm. But, like, he's literally in the most pain, just like you said. Yeah. But he also has, like, a big care, and he's trying to protect his brothers. Yeah. Both physically, but also, like, emotionally. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Man, okay. So, uh, before we get, like, into too many wows, like, I'll, <laughs> I'll probably start popping off. But uh, but yeah, no. Then there's the mother scene, which I love. Mm-hmm. I love when they get there. You know, they're all, you know Angelica Houston like narrated a, her whole like Wes Anderson shot style letter that she sent them, saying about man eating tiger <laughs> is here come in the spring, and they're already in India. Yeah, and uh, she was in like Nepal, I think. Yeah, no, she was in the Himalayas. Yeah, so pretty much Nepal. But um, so. You know, they're all basically, they're already, I like how they get there. She's like, I told you to come in the spring. And Owen Wilson like, well, I guess we should leave. She's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't we just leave then? <laughs> She's like, no, just idiot, come here. <laughs> you know, and that's a but whole But imagine like, scene. like your children are like literally in India. Yeah. Seeing you and you're like, I told you to come, not now. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like, okay, mom, sure. Mm-hmm. Think your mom would do something like that? No. Would my? I don't think my mom would either. I don't think your mom would leave and go to like leave your her, your family. Yeah, true. Yeah, she, <laughs> yeah. My mom definitely wouldn't. No, I know. I know mine. I wasn't trying to get like too personal. Or anything. Don't worry. I was just like I was just kind of like a no, question on the my fly. My mom wouldn't. My mom wouldn't leave her family. Yeah, mine. Mine neither. Yeah, you, you got to see, but um, but yeah, no, that's where like. You see the root of a lot of the dysfunction almost. Mm-hmm. You know, the way, because you see the reflection of how uh, Francis was like, so yeah, you want this, Jack? You're going to eat that? Okay, great. Yeah. Because she does the exact yes. same thing. <laughs> you know, you see that. Yeah. It's like, that's where it's from. Mm-hmm. So then that, like, that's where it's kind of like, okay. So that's where a lot of it did go wrong was kind of their parents. Yeah. But then they like they kind of needed each other in this experience to kind of be able to break away from. Well, because they're the only ones who understand each other's like trauma and pain. Yeah. Because they've all experienced it, and it's just manifested in different ways. Right. In everyone's life. Yeah, because you you know, it's kind of hard to get that closeness with your parents like you would with like your siblings, you know. Yeah. At least for me. I don't know. I'm in a weird position. I feel like incredibly close to my parents. Yeah. And then like incredibly close to my siblings. Right. It's like. It's just a different kind of close. Yeah, true. It's like I wouldn't share such explicit details with my 
you know, parents as mm-hmm. I would with like my siblings. Definitely. And also like I I think but there's something about like your siblings cuz you've all been raised the same way. Yeah. So like you can relate a little more with yeah. them. Yeah. Even though like you can be like fundamentally different people. Mhm. Like the core of you, like you just you the way you experience the world even, like, the way you might act in it is different, but the way you, like, interpret it, I feel like, is very similar to one another. Right. Yeah, that's 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 a good, that's pretty much a good point. That's basically what I was, like, uh-huh. kind of saying you just worded it much better. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you definitely worded it much better. <laughs> Stop. Well, sweet. Let's see. So, yeah, so, um, that's pretty much it. Well, I mean, like, we can definitely, like, stay on, like, the mom. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do like the scene where they, um, they're like, she's, you know, they're like, they ask her like, why didn't you come to the funeral? Yeah. You know, and she just kind of like, I don't know, she kind of like gave them like the cold hand almost, well not mm-hmm. the cold hand, like just. Cold shoulder. Yeah, cold shouldered them. Yeah, that's it. I knew it was cold something. Cold <laughs> shoulder. But, uh, she like, didn't really tell him. She was like, well, I just, you know, don't know. And basically. <laughs> And so obviously they were like pissed and they were pretty yeah. miffed about everything and like how she was doing it. And she was just kind of like dry with them. Yeah. But then she was like, why don't we talk to each other without saying anything at all? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then like that whole like, w- like 360 shot of them all, mm-hmm. which I really liked. It was almost like that 70s show style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like the rotation. Yeah. That's just how I was like, Oh, that's from that 70s show. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even, I didn't even put, oh, it's all good. I didn't even put that together. That's, that's so funny. Yeah. That's just how I saw No, it. That's exactly what it's like. <laughs> I just didn't even think about that. I know. I was like, this is very familiar. I don't know what from, but it's from something. <laughs> but yeah. Um, wh- one thing that I noticed is that really had an insight to, all their personalities. Mm-hmm. Like the mom really cared for them. She meant the best for them. Yeah. But like at the same time, she just didn't know how to show it. Yeah. And she can't, and she, know, like she's, like she has a lot of limitations. And even if she wants to, she can't really provide that for them. Right. It's just, she's just not capable of doing it. And also, I think it's interesting the like nonverbal communication. Mm-hmm. Because I almost feel like that's what they get out of the second funeral. Yeah. That's pretty much well, it. And also because I do think the way they communicate with each other, what they say to each other is not what they mean. And also, like, throughout the whole film, they say these things to each other, and they don't really mean it. Right. And, like, when they agree with Owen Wilson, they don't actually agree with him. But there's, he knows they don't actually agree with them. Yeah. Like, they're it's they're in almost entirely communicating non-verbally, even if they're saying things. Right. They, they read into each other, and they somehow are really good at it. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. It's like they know like everything, but because they don't communicate verbally, there's a lot of like built up resentment. Yeah, everything just builds up. You're right. Yeah. Huh. That's a good way to look at it. Good job. <laughs> I feel like we're uncovering new things. We, like... we, yeah, you're definitely uncovering new things for me, <laughs> which is like pretty pretty cool. Thank you. That's why, that's why I love doing this. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. The one thing I saw about that is pretty much like yeah, what you said. You know, it's like everything is just more like visual. Mm-hmm. They can see what you know what they're saying. But I also took it as like this is a good time to like look at their personalities as a whole. Yeah. Well, as like themselves. You know, like the way like the mom she cares for him. You know, mm-hmm. you see it. You know, she always has like tears in her eyes and proud to see that her boys are there and yeah. what they've become. And then Francis is just kind of like like yeah, I'm like the leader here. You know, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm taking, I'm trying to take care of everyone. And then like. I feel like Francis is always the one with the talking stick. Yeah, pretty (laughs) much. (laughs) The one with the talking stick. He's definitely like the negotiator. Mm -hmm. He's like, y'all let me handle this. I got it. (laughs) But uh, then Adrian Brody is just kind of there. He's just kind of dead faced. Mm -hmm. You know, he's just, he's like, I'm just here. You know, I'm just, I'm just existing, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm along for the ride, basically. Yeah, he's, but he also, I still feel, I still feel like he does carry the, I'm not like the other two. Yeah. And I think he's not, but. No, definitely not. But then I also think each one of them is not like the other two. Right. So he's not special in that way. You know, it's like, yeah, that's true. That's true. 
Uh, he definitely is like very different than the two, but like at the same time, you know, he's just he's just himself. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. That's 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 a good point. That he also shares in like their same petty behavior. Right. Like he loves to same gossip. selfishness. That man loves to gossip. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and also, he likes to gossip more than um, Jack does. Yeah, like, that's true. Because. Because because Jason Schwartzman doesn't gossip with Owen Wilson until he finds out that Adrian Brody has been talking about him behind his back. Right, that's true. That's and where Jeff- he was like, "All right, I'm gonna. How about this? Mm-hmm. He's, he's you know he's gonna be a dad." And also like, Adrian Brody hates Owen Wilson, but he just can't help but like gossip with him. Right, which I think is so funny. That's it's like that's like a outlet. sibling thing. That's true. That that is a, definitely a sibling thing. It's like you have to have your outlet. Whether you like him yes. or not. You yes. Know? And also, who better to talk like badly about your siblings with than another sibling? Exactly. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's, it's, there's the media right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just kind of like, like, uh, you know, I'm going to make this bigger than it needs to be. Definitely. But, um, but yeah, no, then, uh, one thing I saw like about Jason Schwartzman's character and like his facial expressions, which, they all did really good mm-hmm. with like just their facial expressions. I don't know why. They're like, all great actors. They are, and they showed their emotions like, yes. pretty well in it. Without being too obvious. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. The way I saw Jason Schwartzman's face was like, I'm, I'm going to get what I want. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go after it. That man gets everything he wants. He d- yeah. You got the, the hostess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like, how, you know, he just, he just said it and then just had a plan and just like, Real sly, but then like he's like silent just, but deadly. Yeah, but things <laughs> still don't work out for him. He's pretty much yeah. He's pretty much silent. Well, but I think <laughs> I think he's one of those people who, once he gets what he wants, he realizes it's not what he wanted. Yeah, you know that's what I true. mean. I he really that, doesn't know what he wants. Yes, but he still gets it. Yes, so like like he can decide he wants something on like a on a on a superficial level. Hmm. But then he's always going to be dissatisfied with it. Yeah. Because he, he probably he gets what he wants, not what he needs. That's true. Mm-hmm. And then, but he still gets it either way. Mm-hmm. And you just you can see that in his face in that moment, I feel like. Mm-hmm. That's just how I read it. Definitely. Well, yeah. I mean, that's pretty much like the end. We already talked about like them just leaving their emotional baggage. Yeah. Like, they move actually, like, physically... But- just leave everything. Yeah. Leave everything behind the past trauma of their father just dying. And that's why This Time Tomorrow is such a great opening song. Yeah. Because it's like... The same This scene. Time Tomorrow, I'll leave the world behind me. Yeah. And then they do. They, like, leave everything. Yeah, it's like the same shot and everything. Mm-hmm. But, like, you know, the end of, like, the whole movie, it's, like, from the beginning to the end. Mm-hmm. So... It basically is like that time was was that time yesterday, yeah. and that's awesome. That's a good little tie-in. Yeah. Well, uh, the what last thing was like my thing with uh Jason Schwartzman, like him accepting reality. Mm-hmm. Whenever he was like, they were like, I like the way you yell, you know, or like I like the way you're mean in that. He's like, he's like actually the characters are. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. You know? It was, it was basically like that, where it's just yeah. like him accepting oh. reality. Okay, can we talk about Hotel um, Chevalier? Chevalier. Chevalier. Yeah. Is that how you say? I, I don't. Whatever. I don't know. We'll have to ask Siri. Oh my God, he is so mean. He is such an asshole. Yeah, he is. <laughs> and then like, Mad- Natalie Portman in that is very psychotic. Oh my God, that, they are both like manipulators. Yeah. Like, Together, they're like perfect for each other, but like in the worst way. Very, very true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, they. Uh, I, I don't know what was going on. He just wanted to leave. Yeah. And then she was just like chasing him. If you haven't seen that short, you definitely mm-hmm. should. No, because I was talking to someone about this movie last night, and they never, and they were like, "Oh, I have the album like on vinyl. It's so good." It's like, have you seen the short film? And they were like, "No." Really? But you have to see it. I feel like the it, it's honestly, like twenty minutes, right? Not even. Not even. It's like less than ten minutes. I think. Yeah. It's like really short, and very I very like cinematic. It, very cinematic. Yeah, but it lays the stage for everything. Yeah, it explains why Natalie Portman was randomly in that <laughs> that stage coach. Wait, can I? That is crazy. The way Natalie Portman is just like 
because <laughs> I feel very fortunate. I did watch the short before I ever saw the movie. Oh, really? Like, so I wa- like, oh, wow. Yes. So it was not a surprise to me when I saw Natalie Portman in there. You're like, oh, there she is. But if I had not had seen... You would have been very confused. I would have I been like... As someone who watched the movie before the short, I was very, very confused. I was like, why is she in here? Yeah. And then I saw, oh, there's a short. Mm-hmm. So... That's where that came from. She, yeah, shoot, there was like something. Um, Natalie Portman, she only did 30 minutes of shooting for that out of the whole movie. Yeah, I mean, as she should, she's in that for like a second. Yeah, it's just like a little pan, yeah. which I really like that whole pan through the I, state, like the train. Yeah, I do too. Which I thought they were all literally like on the same train. Well, and now I want to see a Bill Murray short film. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome, like, which there probably is like a good bit of. I wonder. Oh, yeah, something. I, I bet they cut scenes with him. I feel like there had to have been more. I feel like there was too. Yeah. Uh, according to IMDb uh, trivia stuff, Bill Murray was originally scheduled for three days of filming. Mm-hmm. He shot his entire role in a day and a half. Yeah, they definitely cut something out. Yep. They I, definitely had to. Yeah, but I think it works really well. Yeah, it's just funny. No, it's so funny because you're like, oh, this is a Wes Anderson, Bill Murray joint. Yeah. And it's not. It's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen. And, <laughs> oh, it doesn't happen. Yeah, it's just not. And I love that. It's a great, because Adrian Brody comes out of literally nowhere at the beginning. Yeah. It's like, well, and it's like interesting because it's like he was the last one on the train. The mm-hmm. other two got there on time. That's true. He didn't. And he somehow outran this man who was like way ahead of him. <laughs> like, I want to know. Adrian Brody seemed like so annoyed to be there the whole time. Yeah. Why was he hustling so much to get on the train? He really was. No, he was. He, he was like, I'm, I'm going to make this look cool, though. No, oh, he made it look so cool. He did, actually. He's just a cool dude. He is. I do want to, like, mm-hmm. I look. I kind of look at him as a role model. Adrian Brody? Yeah, a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> Especially from the pianist. Have you okay. seen? I have not, but I know I need to. I know I need to. You need to watch that one, Cat. It's so good. I know. It's really That's sad. That's a big though, recommendation. Right? Very sad, but very I good. I like uh, stop. Holocaust movies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're pretty tough. I'm not to laughing watch. at the Holocaust, I promise. Yeah, I'm, but yeah, no. They're, it's just, like it's another one of those really heart wrenching. Yes. All right. Well. That's pretty much the end of the this whole. Was so well, exciting. well, that's the end of like the discussion part. Oh. I do have a few categories. Okay, okay. Just a few. We'll get yeah, through yeah, them. Yeah. Um, I did have like some tidbits. Yeah. On the production, uh, like the three brothers are named after Francis Co- Ford Coppola, mm-hmm. and then Peter Bogdanovich. Oh, he, he, Peter um, Bogdanovich. Yeah, Bogdanovich. Wait, yeah. He, wait, that's actually really interesting because um, his wife of a long time. Um, oh, I can't. Her name's like Patty or Patsy or something. Uh-huh. She's the one who discovered Wes Anderson. She's the one. Really? She saw the Bottle Rocket short film. Have you ever seen the Bottle yeah. Rocket short uh, film? Oh, I haven't seen the short film. It's you should watch it. It's it's so good. So she and oh. then she like found it and like yeah, but she was married to Peter Bogdanovich for a while. He did like Paper Moon, right? Yeah. Yeah, he, she was married to him for like a long time, and like she actually she's never been credited as a director. But it's like believed that she like she really actually was like the mastermind behind of the Peter Bogdanovich stuff because after they got divorced, his like his films just met were not as like critically acclaimed. Oh, okay. and, yeah. Huh. But she's the one who actually discovered Wes Anderson. Really? That's yeah, pretty that's cool. That's interesting that I can't. So it's probably know. like the credit to that. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. That's so interesting. I didn't know that was why. That I don't know. Like I really didn't know a whole lot. I like I haven't seen Paper Moon. I haven't seen any of his stuff, but I Yeah. There's like this really good podcast called um, "You Must Remember This." It's about like um, Hollywood during like the 20th century, and they go through like early history, but they also do like up until like the 90s. Oh, wow. anyway, it's really interesting if you're interested in like Hollywood history. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna have to yeah. check that out. You should. It's cool. and it's very well produced. Okay, I'm gonna have to check that out. Yeah, oh, we'll have to maybe collaborate she, one day too. <laughs> she did like a whole. Um, series on her, um, Peter Bogdanovich's like ex-wife or maybe like ex-partner. I'm not sure exactly. They were like, they were, but they were together they were, long they were, term. Yeah. Some, together somehow. Yeah. But I think they were married. I think they okay. Were. Gosh, well, I'll have to check yeah. out like more. I just looked up, I just skimmed over Peter Bog, mm-hmm. Bog yeah, Bogdanovich a little yeah. bit, finding that out. But then Jack was named after Jack Nicholson, <laughs> which, you know. That's actually really funny. I, I mean, yeah, that, that makes, that makes sense. You know, why yeah. wouldn't you? <laughs> That's actually hilarious. <laughs> that is pretty cool. 
Um, but in order to achieve a constant limp while filming, Owen Wilson placed a small lime in his shoe, so, which is pretty funny. <laughs> That's actually so good. It's an Owen Wilson thing to Wait, do. And that actually makes sense because as you would be walking on it, it would get like smaller, so then the limp would not be as bad. Uh, it, would, it would get. It would get. Mm, although I guess that would only work if you're filming chronologically. A, a lot too. Yeah. Also that too. Because mm-hmm. sometimes I do go out of. That's a cute little, a cute little fun little fact. Little tidbit. Though. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Um, Natalie Portman, like I said, she traveled to Jodhpur, India, for thirty minutes of shooting. Wait, they literally travel. They literally had her travel to India. Yeah. I guess so, because but that's where she- they had the sound stage, probably. Oh. And, like, they also used, like, an Did actual, they- like, train. Okay. Uh, and they, like, re- redecorated everything. Yeah. That's very crazy. It is. Well, also, I know, like, for tax purposes and stuff, they won't move production, right? Right. Stuff like that, too. There's a lot that goes into it. Yeah. No, because this is, like, so random. Have you ever seen the movie Josie and the Pussycats? Uh-uh. Oh, great film. Very camp. Very, like... 2000s like teen fun movie uh-huh. but you it's like also based on like a cartoon from like the do you know about Josie and the Pussycats Josie uh uh-uh. uh it's like I think it's like the same like company that made like Scooby Doo oh okay okay I think so or like the Flintstones like that you know what I'm talking yeah, about yeah, okay yeah. Uh, oh um Hera Barbera or Hera Bar- okay yeah or okay and they like talked about like they filmed and like. I think they filmed like Toronto uh-huh. and they forgot to get like one shot of someone putting a CD in a CD player and they had to fly back to Toronto like while they were in post and get that shot. Because to, they couldn't, because get, they, they couldn't do it yeah, here for in like, the States. Yeah, for like tax reasons Man. and stuff. It, yeah. That's crazy. That's so off topic. I'm so sorry. No, it's, it's all good. It's a big tangent. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. But you should watch Josie and the Pussycats. Josie and the Pussycats. Do you know um, uh, Parker Posey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's in it. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, and same with um, you know, Alan Cummings. Yeah, Alan I like Cumming. Alan Cumming. Alan Cumming. Okay, yeah, he's in it, and like Rachel Lee Cook, and like Tara okay. Reid, wow, and so Rosario it's... Dawson. Oh, really, Rosario yeah, Dawson? It's a great film. I like her. Yeah, so it's it like, like they've fun. got they've got a lot of people in that one. Mm-hmm. I have to check that one out. Okay, so man, that's crazy. Yeah, they it's probably a had a lot film. of like tax purposes for. Yeah. Reasons of her, you know, of Natalie Portman going all the way to India yeah. just to film 30 minutes, mm-hmm. which is pretty fun. Or maybe they thought she'd be in more of it. She probably you did. Think? But then she spent 10 days just exploring India after oh. that, which oh. is pretty cool. That is cool. I would do the same. Yeah. And then Bill Murray did the same thing. Uh, he shot cool. his, you know, his entire role in a day and a half. Yeah. Half the time they thought. Yeah. Pr- which is pretty incredible. Yeah. And then stayed in India for a month. Which is pretty insane. Oh my god, like the Beatles. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he probably did. He probably Sorry. did like some of their own thing, their same things. You too. think he brought the um the beans and the you know Ringo brought a bunch of beans to India? Oh, wait, he did. Yes, I, I read a little bit about that. Yeah, the and Beatles then, in India. And then uh, George learned how to play the seder or whatever. Mm, not gonna lie, this movie does kind of like give the Beatles in India, especially with um, especially with uh Jack. Having like the same haircut. Mm, yeah. One of my brothers was like, hey, look, he looks like one of the Beatles. Yeah. He looks like George Harrison. That's actually so true. I yeah. didn't even think about it has that. Like, look, and look, you can like see right there. It has like, uh, yeah. yeah, he has like the George Harrison mustache. George Harrison is my favorite. He has like, yeah, uh, same here. I like, <laughs> Wait, really? I like, I like his uh, John solo Lennon career. John Lennon and George Harrison. But I'm, oh, I'm his more, solo career is so good. I like, I'm like, I love solo career, George Harrison, mm-hmm. Paul McCartney. Okay. I'm not like, I'm not a Paul girl. Hmm. I, I like I like Paul. Like I do like John over Paul, but I like artistically as a person, yeah. I don't like John. But artistically, I love his vision, his everything. Yeah. But like George Harrison is great. Like he's he's fabulous, and I love how he like he was like he was the one who was really obsessed with Indian culture and sound. Yeah. And he's the one that learned how to play all the different. Yeah. Instruments. He he really transformed their sound. He did. Mm-hmm. He added a lot but of spice. Now that I'm thinking about that, it's really interesting that um, I don't think there's a single Beatles song in Darjeeling Limited. Which is interesting. That, yeah, because you would think that he would put, because he does like, the, it's not that he doesn't use the Beatles. Like, hey, Jude is very famously in the Royal Tenenbaums. Yeah, Royal Tenenbaums. Mm-hmm. He does use the Beatles. That's so weird, that because he opted for the Kinks and the Rolling Stones over the Beatles. Yeah, which 
I don't know. I feel like the Kinks and the Beatles would have been more, I guess, appropriate. I don't know for what he was going for, yeah. but at the same time, I do like you know the little touch just, of the Rolling Stones. I just think it's interesting because the Beatles literally went to India, and he doesn't put the Beatles in there, but yeah. he puts like their kind of rivals in there. Maybe he would have felt like it was a little too heavy-handed. Yeah, I agree. Maybe, I agree. That may have been because you know we can see he has no, I things agree. in and out for a purpose. Yeah, no, I, that does actually feel very, very intentional. Very strategic. To me. Yeah, very hmm. intentional. Perhaps that was going on. Um. But let's see, I uh, have some more tidbits. Mm-hmm. Three brothers wear white and gold at an Indian funeral and then black in the flashback. This is different how they process the lo- loss, uh, the loss of life, as well as the difference in cultural practices. Yeah. We already talked about that a good bit, but yeah. that was like something I put down. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you want to get into some of the categories? Um, or is, was there anything else that you had? trying to think because i feel like we just talked about like soundtrack yeah and like we can like kind of like focus in kind of narrowing i love the kinks i was the kinks yes same here such a highlight on the soundtrack for me Uh uh-huh also i did like i'm not a okay i'm not a big rolling stone girl really i yeah i like the rolling stones i'm more of a beatles girl but also i am more of like i like like if i'm going like i like Early Led Zeppelin. Same. I like Beatles. I like Kinks. I like Beach Boys. Beach Boys. I, I'm just not a big Rolling Stones. I'm not so a Stones girl. So not into the Stones. Okay. They're fine, but also I, I like them. But I love the song. I love Play with Fire. Play That's with like fire one of my good. favorite Stones songs. It's one that I haven't like listened to a whole lot, but I do yeah. like it. Yeah. No, that's um. Yeah. I've, yeah. No, they're good. I've definitely added like a little bit of like a texture to mm-hmm. everything. Um. But they're like the Kinks is like what I really noticed. Yeah, and I had not heard those songs until like this. Like I watched this, you know, a few like year or two ago. Also, what's a Marlena Dietrich song? You know, what I'm talking about. It's in. It's in the Darjeeling Limited. It's also in the short film. Oh, the oh uh, yeah, the French song. Yeah, I like that song. Yeah, that's actually good. I need to go back and like <laughs> listen to it. I need to pull it back up on Spotify. Yeah. And then of course like the Indian. Uh, oh, I love influenced it. score. Yes, I love that. That was from uh shoot, did I write that down? Um Sat Satyajit Ray? Yeah. Satyajit? Yeah, from his like his uh Ray? his films. That, I've uh, never seen him. Same here, but apparently Wes Anderson is like heavily influenced by him. Okay. And so that's why like he really wanted to yeah. kind of use like in the Indian culture. Okay, is he like a Bollywood? I believe so. Okay. Or kind of like, start, you know, helped start it or pioneered. I need yeah. to look up more about him. Okay, I'm like, I'm kind of looking at him right now. Okay, but he, okay, he's a pretty prolific auteur. So um, he really like pioneered a lot, it sounds yeah. like. I, West actually, Anderson. that makes a lot of sense. I could see um, Wes Anderson being really inspired by Indian filmmaking. Yeah. Because it's so strong in like color and yeah. like. Yeah, I could totally see that. It yeah. pops real well. Yeah, and I think I think Wes Anderson is really great at that. That's pretty awesome. That like he had like a way to show an homage to him. Yeah, this was his love letter to to in, the Indian culture, and Indian Indian cinema. Satajit, I think it's Satajit. Yeah. Satajit. I think so. And then, I don't know. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I know. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna try I'm to not, butcher it personally. I'm not. I I don't I'm not that cultured. It's, sorry, <laughs> it's all good. We're I don't think most of us are really <laughs> Indian cultured here. Yeah. <laughs> at least at least for me, I haven't really met a whole lot of people. <laughs> there, that's more in Canada, I think. More in Canada. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um, but yeah, hit picks. Do you have any hit picks on this? Oh, like my favorite parts. Yeah. What, what was like something that's like really like stuck with you? Look at the the opening, obviously. Yeah. I love like the little cars and like the and like Bill Murray. Okay, I love Bill Murray. Mm-hmm. Every time I see that man's face on screen, like, I like I'm like about to cry, like like tears of joy. That's very much so like my response to Bill Murray. Um, and so that's all. That's like very obviously a standout, and also the curveball it throws. Well, yes, I I would have loved to see a movie about Bill Murray. On a train in India. Uh huh. 
I'm very happy with the movie that we have. Yeah, same. <laughs> Just your, th- yeah. You may maybe like a nitpick of yours would be like to have a little bit more Bill Murray. But honestly, I feel like it works. It did. It subverts expectations in an interesting way because it's not playing on who we think Bill Murray is as an actor. It's playing on who we think Wes Anderson is as a director. Yeah, that's true. And I actually really appreciate that he subverts expectations. Also, is this Owen Wilson's first film with Wes Anderson without his bro- Is Luke Wilson in Life Aquatic? No. Luke Wilson is I don't think not he is. in Life Aquatic. Okay, so this is his second film without Luke Wilson. His yeah. second Wes Anderson film without And, like, Luke probably one of the first that he didn't have, like, a hand in the writing of. Yeah. yeah, like, a big hand in the writing of all of those. Yes, yes. Well, yeah, because they met at UT. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's where their friendship blossomed, and they made... Bottle, bottle rocket, rocket, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I think that's crazy that he like helped write Bottle Rocket. That is insane. Um, but yeah, I think also just their acting. Like, mm-hmm. I think that even though they don't look alike, the brothers are casted so well. They really are. Are cast so well. Yeah. Um, no, I, I agree. I'll piggyback on that one. Yeah. Like, I think they were casted very well, and in fact, I think that's one that I actually wrote down. Yeah, that is. Um, but I know like mine is like the character development is mm-hmm. really like what leaves you yes. feeling good about the film in the end. Yes. As if like they're going off to have like a better life and going to live mm-hmm. better. Yeah. Almost like how healing, I don't know, healing in one area in your life can really fix a lot of other areas. It can. It kind of, it kind of sets, you know, better stepping stones for Definitely. you. Definitely. And I'm just a big sucker for character development. In film, mm-hmm. also any kind of sibling story, I I just really relate to. Same here. Like I mean, I'm not a brother. <laughs> yeah. And I well, only I have mean, one like... brother, but I think about like, what if I went with my sisters to India? Yeah. And we just completely just healed. And it still has like a, it has the same kind of feel good like. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it would be that much different. I don't honestly. think so. Honestly, I don't think so either. Just the characters have different. But like the different outcome would be the same. Yeah, yeah. It would yeah. have been a, just a little different. It would have been more of a girls' trip type. Instead girls' of just, trip. Instead of just like a a dude's trip. You a know? dude's trip. Boys' trip. Yeah, boys' trip. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I just didn't say it. But yeah, nitpicks. <laughs> Do you have any nitpicks? Um, I'm trying to think. I guess it does feel like a very. It does feel very white people in India. Yeah. And like white people in the like I don't know, but at the same time I think that works through the story. I think so too. That's yeah. You know I could say that I would you know say the same as like, it is kind of seen almost like forest you know yeah. in India. Yeah, India I feel like is um well because I, I, I mean I do like to think of setting as character. Yeah. And I think it does provide like I think India is a character in the story. It but is. it's also a very two-dimensional view of it. It's not very fleshed True. out. It's very much so like how like someone like how like I don't know. Also, I feel like they you they take other people's trauma as their own. Like yeah. like it take like the little boy dying and like his family's trauma that obviously seeing someone die super traumatic. But but it was like it was all everything had to focus on him. Yes, it was okay. yeah, but at the same time, the story is about these brothers, so they right. are the most important. Right. It was, yeah, it, it definitely, like, had a lot to play in it, you yeah. know, kind of their selfishness. Yeah. Um, and then, But, yeah, you're right. It did feel a little too two-dimensional for, you know, the character but, of India. But then I don't know if that's actually a problem because that's how they're actually seeing it. Right. And so I don't know. I, have, I don't know. I'm a little conflicted on that, but. Yeah. I mean, I could see either way, mm-hmm. honestly. Um, but I mean, I would say my nitpick, Mm -hmm. uh, I want to see a little bit more of Angelica Houston. So true. (laughs) I did want to see a little bit more of Angelica Houston. I don't know why. I just feel like she was a little underplayed. I actually, I completely agree with that. Angelica Houston always has so much to offer. Yeah. Like, no, I completely agree. Yeah. I just feel like she was a little underplayed personally. You know, especially like, like as the mom too, or maybe she. I like, but maybe that's I feel how like she should have had a little bit more of like a, I guess an arc, an arc, yeah, more of character growth. But you then, know, just kind of like a realization, like, oh, I screwed you all up as my sons. But then I don't know that a realization like that would work because True. 
Because they needed each other. And yes, because I think that we also have to see that their selfishness is a product of their mother's selfishness. Yeah, true. Like, and honestly, I do feel like Angelica, you, I always feel like that's a good sign. When you want to see more of someone, Yeah, that's a good sign. I feel that like it true. means you've seen enough of them. Oh, huh, okay. You okay, know what I'll, I mean? I'll take that. I'll take yeah. that. That's a good point. But maybe, maybe I mean, I could just be I too... Know. I feel like she could have played just a little just more. Just a little just more. Just hit a little bit of a sweet spot. But I like that she didn't grow as a character personally. Yeah, I kind of should. Well, it, it so, was up to, it was not her that we were trying to watch grow. Also, she's too old to change. Not True. like, not to be an ageist, <laughs> but like in the story, <laughs> I think the point is that it's like the children can like gr- move forward from this. Yeah. Like from what they've experienced growing up and from their parents. It, it almost, I feel like we don't need to see her change as an adult. Right. Like That's after true. she's, she's already in like, like really traumatized these kids. Yeah. But we don't need to see her change. And we weren't following her. No. So you're right. You're right. I mean, I guess I, was, I also think you're you're right too. You know, it was just just a little more. I'm not complaining about it too much. <laughs> um, I guess one, um uh it's like the brothers all seemed a little too much like they were as we were following them. As if they hit their character, each of them hit their character arc together. It's like, hey, we're brothers now. Again, mm-hmm. we're close. They were a little too close in the flashback. It was as if, like, they had no problems. Yeah. You know, it's like everything felt like we had been watching it. There, it didn't feel like they were, like, a little bit more resentful of each other. It felt a little too, like, normal. You know, I- it's, it's like we were, we were, they were supposed to have this baggage. I agree. They could have um, upped the ante. Yeah, like they, higher They could have not stakes. worked with each other too as well. Yeah. No. It it does kind of read unbelievable. Yeah. I don't know. It also, I, I feel like that the, we wouldn't have had this movie if they, you know, really acted like this. I mean, I guess they all kind of dispersed after. Yeah, I think that's also something to consider. Is like time does heal wounds. Yeah. And you can have like some big confrontation with someone, and if you take some time apart from each other. It could it kinda can kinda make the tension grow a little bit. Make the tension grow because you ha- you're you like building on unresolved conflict. Right. Because I feel like the a lot of times, not always, but some, like a lot of times when you prolong a confrontation, it just gets worse. Right. That's true. Like when you procrastinate, I don't know. Yeah. No, I, I, I get it. I get it. No, I see what you're saying. I do think there but could have been it, more it payoff. Just, it just felt a little bit too... Unearned. Yeah. You know, like the flashback, they were just like, okay, we've watched them grow in this. Now we have a flashback. They're the same people in the flashback, which takes place a year before. They don't seem that different. Yeah, exactly. I just felt like there should have been a little bit more of a difference, you know. Yeah, a little more conflict. Yeah, a little bit more, just a little more, like, you know, distress that their father just died. And Mm -hmm. they played off to each other too well for that. I don't know. That's just how I saw it. I think they just had such good chemistry as actors. Yeah. That it kind of... That's true. Maybe they filmed that afterwards. Maybe. But I agree. I do think there should have been a little more conflict and a little less, like... But then also, I think it also could speak to who they are as people where going behind each other's backs could be more of a betrayal than saying something mean to each other's faces. True. I don't know. Yeah, just kind of leaving things unresolved, like you said. Yeah. Okay. I guess that's kind of... Um, but yeah, I don't really see any cultural impact from this a whole lot. No more than just like Wes Anderson's general cultural impact. Yeah, I think it's just building his catalog. It is like it was gonna. It's this is the build up to what is masterpiece, which I believe was Grand Budapest Hotel. Yeah, and you know, kind of having like the same like style and everything, the colors. This yeah. definitely was a stepping stone. I agree. I don't think Grand Budapest no. Ho- Grand Budapest Hotel could exist without this film. Yeah. Have or at least be the same, mm-hmm. you know, because this definitely was a stepping stone to get to that mm-hmm. point. Um, but yeah, co- uh, questions needing answers. Do you have any? I guess <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm like, sorry, I'm like trying to good. rack my brain. Here, I'll, I'll start. Yeah, all right. Why was there a kid holding a gun when Peter was praying? <laughs> did, did you see that? Did you catch that? No. Like he was praying and there was just a kid off to the side of the screen with a gun pointing at him. What? Yeah. When? Like whenever he's like, I'm going to go over here and pray at another thing. 
Oh, oh, and when they're at their first stop. Yeah, when... there's a kid holding like just a gun at like basically, he's just kind of there with his eyes closed, <laughs> and the kid has like a gun pointing at him. What the hell? I've, I no, I, I don't not... know why. That is I such. Was... That's so weird. Yeah. Oh, here's a question. Why didn't they get kicked off the train when they were supposed to get kicked exactly. off the train? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Why? Yeah. Why didn't they get kicked off when they got off to pray at the mosque? I, well, also, why no Beatles? <laughs> why no Beatles? Why no Beatles? Well, there, there we go. I like, guess I guess we've already covered some of these. Like this time tomorrow could have easily been Tomorrow Never Knows by the Beatles. Tomorrow Never Knows. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's good. I, I actually like, would love like, to see where, that song in that in this movie. Where would we have? Where would they be? Are they still gonna be the same? Are they yeah. gonna change? Are they gonna keep all this going? Well, we'll see. <laughs> we would see. Um, one I have is. Calvin plays it's like, I guess, no, no, no. Who would have played the dad in the Wes Anderson role? Yes. I was wondering the same thing. Like, who is this father figure that we don't ever get to see? I have a, yes, kind of based off of how uh, Owen Wilson looks, how, you know, kind of the others are kind of acting. And he's only been in like, so far, one. Okay, who is it? James Caan. Ah, you brought him up early. (laughs) James Caan. C O N N C A A N J A M E S C A A N. Okay, James Con. I'm looking him up. Yeah, he actually just passed away recently. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, his son is, is in the Ocean's in? movie. He's in a lot. But he's in. He's in a lot. But, he's in like The Godfather. He plays okay. Sonny. Um, yeah, I'm just not like. I don't know why he's not clicking he, in he my plays, brain. He uh, plays Mr. Henry in Bottle Rocket. Yeah, he's just not clicking in my brain. That's who I think. Maybe I don't know about. Uh, oh shoot, what's it? Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman from Royal Tenenbaums. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I don't think so. I don't think you would use him twice as the father. Yeah, same and the same like. Because he is the father, right? He's the father, and he's married to Angelica Houston. Yeah, I feel like that's too easy. Too much, yeah. And Owen Wilson famously is not his son. Yeah. True. <laughs> true. True. Wait, what if this is like Angelica Houston's second family? What if she's the same yeah. mom from the Royal what, Tenenbaums? Is it is it Danny Glover? What if she's not involved because is this is... Da- is their dad Danny Glover? Wait, who's that? The the black guy that she, Wait. That she marries. It couldn't be because no, no. they're, they're too white. I agree, but like what <laughs> if this is like the Royal Tenenbaums? Like, in like, yeah, directly. this is her. She's had the second family. Like this is an affair. That Yes, like she's literally their second family. Mm. Well... And after the tragedy of, you know, what was the dog's name in Royal Tenenbaum that died? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then she runs off to be a nun. But she's actually just married to the other dude. Yeah. And then she runs off. Maybe she just adopts all these wow. three. I don't know. Do you think every Wes Anderson film is actually connected and we just don't know? I don't know. Maybe. Everything mm. is real quirky. Like, like all- I could see it. Couldn't huh. you? Couldn't you see everything being connected in some way we don't know? Like maybe Mr. Fox, you know, out <laughs> somewhere in like a pasture of England. Yeah. And then like all the dogs are on a trash pile too, <laughs> compared to like all the others. And Steve Zeus, who's down. Because the dogs are in the future, right? Oh, that's true. That is true. Isle of Dogs is in the future. And then and Mr. Fox is kind of timeless. Yeah. But I almost feels like back in the 40s. I would say all of his films are kind of timeless. Yeah. He doesn't really date them. Like, not really. They're very Except undated. for like Royal Tenenbaums. Not Royal Tenenbaums. Uh, it Grand is, Budapest. Grand, a Grand Budapest is, is dated. Kind of dated, yeah. But it's like a period piece almost. Yeah. But the other ones like that are like more contemporary are not necessarily like explicitly contemporary. Right. But True. they're not explicitly period. True. Some of them, yeah, you're right about them being timeless, and some of them being kind of like having a little bit of like a, a little taste. Mm-hmm. It's more like a period somewhere in time yeah. around this era. I mean, they're all very like they all feel very '60s and very, very. But I think it's interesting because, um, sorry, I'm like just oh my, God, we've been going for a long time. Yeah, it's it's all good. It's it's also like I have some to cut from like yeah. the break. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, let's see. But, um, but yeah, um, so yeah, so we have those questions needing answers. Yeah. Um, uh, what about notable acting performances? Um, 
I think this um just um, the three brothers. I don't know. They just all killed it. They did, and like so. What I put down is like each brother was perfectly portrayed by each actor. Yes. When they each had their different personalities. Yes. And like each brother had a role within the story, mm -hmm. and each both Adrian Brody, well, all Adrian Brody, Owen Wilson, and I think Jason it, Schwartzman. Adrian just Brody did. is the standout for me. I think so too. I don't know something about him in this film. He's just yeah, he's very magnetic in it. Yeah, he's so magnetic. And then, well, I think also the film begins. I mean, well, it begins with Bill Murray, but it, but the story but, actually begins with Adrian Brody. Yeah, and I feel like he has the most growth out of all. Definitely, and he's like put in the worst situation. Yeah, and also he's the one who's going to be a father, and that's the biggest change. And the whole thing is about their father. You yes, know, that's where all the trauma lies, yeah. and you know. So he has mm -hmm. pretty much the biggest, like, No, so arc. true. So, so true. Oh, that's just how I read it. No, I agree. But yeah, Adrian Brody was the standout for me. Also, it sounds like Angelica Houston is the standout for you because you wanted more of her. A little bit, yeah. yeah. I like Angelica Houston. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, she did great. Um, everyone did great with, like, yeah. the time, you know, what they had. Fantastic film. E even, uh, even the other two, uh, the two, the two stewards on the... Mm -hmm. On the coach. Oh, they were like that guy was hilarious. He was just real dead. Chief fan. Stewart was hilarious. He was awesome. Yeah. And uh, you see Pagoda at some point. He's the one that's in the train. Oh, Pagoda is in this film. Yeah, yeah. I forgot. He's, he's in, like in the train. He comes out and like he's like looking and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, that's Pagoda. I love Pagoda. You're, you're son of a bitch. <laughs> that's the last time you stabbed me. <laughs> I love that. Classic. Uh, do you have any favorite quotes? Um, Owen Wilson being like, this is a metaphor. Oh, yeah. Like, don't you see? This like, is a metaphor. Like, we, we can't locate us. Yeah. No, that's, that's just pretty much everything Owen Wilson says in this. Yeah, he's infinitely quotable. In he is. Film. With everything, even like in Bottle Rocket, you know? Oh, just yeah. Everything he says. Every time Instant he that man classic. opens his mouth. Yeah. And I think, I'm pretty sure... Uh, <laughs> Like every every like quote that I just remember like resonated that I'd throw out, they're all Owen Wilson. Quotes. But also Jason Schwartzman, it's fiction. Oh yeah, yeah, it's fiction. Yeah, that's so yeah. great. That's fabulous. all the characters in this are fictional. Yeah. But uh, my favorite like some some of my favorite from like Francis was like, be careful with it. Only yeah, he, he's like, be careful. It only take it only takes one drop. With like the yeah. THC, yes, and they're and then, they're, and then, like, and then like they're, they're like, uh, but he grabs it and like starts drinking it. He starts <laughs> chugging it. <laughs> Did you notice that? Yes. Like yes. He, it's a lot of it has to do with like the way they like interact. They Their nonverbal communication. Yeah, exactly, exactly what you were talking about earlier. How can a train be lost? It's on rails. Yeah, <laughs> that was a great quote. That was a great quote. How can a train be lost? It's on rails. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, your your impersonation is scaring me now. It's getting really? better as maybe we go I, along, too. Maybe I am really Owen Wilson. ka <laughs> <laughs> That was good. ka wow. <laughs> Stop. Yep. Lightning McQueen. Here. <laughs> and then I like where he's like, look at these assholes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then one of them dies. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like he's like, oh. Uh, you're like especially a, a watching it, he, he says that and you're like dude careful what you say one of them's about to die yeah that's the other thing I feel like they're not careful with their words yeah very carefree about what they say and mm -hmm. what comes out of their mouths definitely that's a good point out um, but I like how he always says like let's make an agreement yeah let's make an agreement also when Adrian Brody is like next time you pull out your tooth like every time you do something like that you should say like I apologize in advance or what was it yeah please excuse this yeah, and, and like, then he, and he then does he it. Does a... Please excuse this. It's he like so actually like funny. looks at him. Mm -hmm. I love that. No, that um, was so funny. But you have any more favorite quotes? I guess that kind of just kind of the same. Mm -hmm, that Everything kinda... and like kind of like you said the nonverbal like work yeah. with the dialogue. That's what I feel like the subtext is like actually working way harder. Yeah. Than the with the actual dialogue. Very true. The subtext is mm -hmm. working overtime with it all. Yeah. Um. But the cinematography, classic. I mean, Wes Anderson, Anderson always kills a. He does, but like his, the guy that kind of is behind it all yeah. is uh, Robert Yeoman. Okay, Robert Yeoman? Yeah, he does. I love you, Robert Yeoman. I don't know, me too. <laughs> I think that's where it all starts. You yeah, know, with Robert Yeoman and the fact that he partners with Wes Anderson is Definitely. like, that's where it all, that's where it all, that's where the magic happens. Definitely. Um, But yeah, Robert Yeoman just 
a, a classic style. That, like you, it captures Robert nostalgic Gilman. emotion and yeah. a blend of artistic pioneering. Mm-hmm. It feels like. Well, I mean, maybe not like pioneering. No, it's I, like a blend. I agree. I agree. I know it plays like it. It, it definitely the cinematography is a love letter to things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> to things that came before it, but it yeah. is doing its own thing. Because right. it feels distinctly Robert Gilman. Yeah, and you know, I think Wes Anderson gets a lot of like the the credit. praise, the credit for it. But like, you know, he's like, I want this shot, you know. Yeah. And then Robert Gilman's the one's like, I know how to do it. You know? Yeah. It's like well, we're gonna do this. We're gonna, you know, their their collaboration is always like what you want to see. Definitely. Well, that's what you go to see in a Wes Anderson film. Yeah, because it's not even you don't always need that product. But I'm just impressed by two people who can like work so yeah. well together and collaborate yeah. very well and like yeah. just, it just it's a knockout every time. It is. Uh, let's see. We already talked about the score and soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Um, but any story rewrites or inserts. Um. I want to know what Bill Murray is doing. Yeah. I'm a little curious. Just a little businessman. Just a little taste of like the Bill Murray-ness. Just like what, just give I, us, just give us an idea of no, more of what he's doing. I just want a Bill Murray short film. I want like Hotel should, Chevalier, but like with Bill Murray. We should, we should, we should ask. Yeah. We, we should, should maybe write something and pitch it to Wes. <laughs> hey, we should, we could do it. We can do no, it. No, that, that's not a bad idea. We actually should. <laughs> I mean, hey, yeah. after, after this, let's, let's do it. Let's yeah. Five minute pitch. Five minute pitch, okay. Five minute pitch, we'll do it. Yeah. But yeah, I'd say like just leave as is. Yeah, um, I, I I agree. It's like a small masterpiece. Yeah, it doesn't Don't matter. Touch it. Yeah, it doesn't matter what we would do differently because we didn't make it. Yeah, true. I mean, it was like we didn't make it, but like there are some movies where I was like, you know what? It would be so much to, better. It would be so much better if we if this happened like that. I didn't feel like that with this. Mm-mm. I don't know, like even like the kid dying was like real sad, but like it played such a crucial role to like. Oh yeah, the character development. It wouldn't work without it. It really would not have. Mm-hmm. So I, I think it all worked out really well. I think so too. Yeah. Well, uh, recasting. No. Anything? Absolutely not. I think yeah. Wes Anderson knocks it out of the park every time with his yeah. casting. He knows who has who has to play the role. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I agree. Ultimately, leave it alone. Mm-hmm. Um, but we talked about it earlier. Luke Wilson in there somewhere. Oh yeah, I would have loved a little Luke Wilson. Maybe, maybe as one of the brothers instead. It could have been. Or if done. they just had like another brother who wasn't there. Yeah, like a flat. Like they had a brother and a dad that died. Yeah. And so. Luke Wilson was like the other one. Or if Luke Wilson was just peeking his head out like Pagoda. Yeah. Like, so like would have been classic. Like, hey, can y'all keep it down, down here? Yeah. And something like that. Yes. Yes. Like, they're like, hey, don't we know you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> something like that. I don't know. Or like if like when they threw their cigarettes at, out of the train, they like hit Luke Wilson. Or something. <laughs> that would actually would have been good. That would have been so. Funny. Just another like Wes Anderson cast cameo. Or if it like they kind of mirrored the ending with yeah. like a Luke Wilson cameo. That actually would have been funny. That would have been cool. Just him kind of standing there, just kind of like, look at these assholes. Yeah. Oh, <gasps> that would have look. That would have been so good. That would have been. He's just kind of waiting for the next You're train. So right. I don't know. Something could have been done for Luke yeah. Wilson. Or if Luke Wilson was at the airport, I don't yeah, know. Just kind of waiting there. Or was at the convent? I don't know. I just would have oh, loved him. And that then... actually would have been fun. Somewhere in there could have been Luke Wilson. Yeah, the world needs more Luke Wilson. It does. We'll have to make that happen. Yeah. We'll have to make sure. Well, sweet. Well, that's it. <gasps> this wow. is so much fun. Wow. I'm glad you enjoyed it. This is it. great. You're going to have to do it again. Definitely. Like, you're going to have to come on again <laughs> a few more times. I have so much to say. <laughs> I know. Well, like, we're going to have to do that. We're going to, uh, we have to get, like, a few other people on, too. Like, we can, like, tackle this. Yeah. You know, we're going to have to do another, like, movie. Like, what's a movie that you want to do? Mulholland Drive. Mulholland Drive. Okay. It's we'll, so we'll, good. We'll, we'll do that. It's we'll crazy. That. I'll put that down on the list. Yeah, you need to see it. Okay, I do have to see it. Mm-hmm. Definitely. You know, we talked about uh, I haven't seen it. Nope. So I'm going to have to watch that. We're going to have to Ooh. do a... <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. I'm such a loser. <laughs> so we're going to have to watch... We're going to have to watch... Uh, do a Tarantino movie, of course. Nice. Uh, I want to do The King's Speech. I've never seen The King's Speech. You should watch that I one. I know. It's super good. Super good. I you know. I'm like a sucker for Colin Firth. Okay, fair. Yeah. Oh, That's shit. pretty valid. Yeah, and then The Kingsman, of course, speaking of Colin Firth. Oh, speaking of Colin Firth, but he's not in it, but this just made me think of... Uh, have you seen the 2020 Emma... Uh uh-uh. uh. The Jane Austen, yeah, the Jane Austen. Yeah, with uh, Anya Taylor. Anya, I love Anya Taylor. I think it's pronounced Anya. Oh, Anya. 
Yes, Angel. Whatever. She's Anya Taylor Joy to me. Yes, yeah, same. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. That movie is so good. I love that movie. I have to check that out. You should watch it. Sweet. I'm a big sucker. She's my celebrity crush. <laughs> There's just don't, so. Don't, don't tell anybody as I put this out. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can cut. <laughs> we yeah, can we'll cut, cut that, that out. Part. We'll cut that part. No, she's she's mine too. <laughs> really? No, not Sweet. really. I, I'm. But, I had her, but like I had also, her first. No, I've liked her since the movie Split. Did you see Split? No. The M Night Sh- Sh- Shyamalan. I don't care, but yeah, she's in it with um, <laughs> who's that guy who's in a um, he's uh, in Car- James uh James McAvoy. Yeah, yeah, he's in that film. Yeah. I know about the movie. I just haven't seen. No, it. No, I saw it in theaters, and when I saw her, oh, I was ago. like, I loved her instantly, and then I forgot about her, and then she was in The Witch. I didn't see The Witch. I don't watch that's what horror. I fir- that's what I first watched with her. Okay. So we'll have to do that one. Oh, Halloween's coming up. The witch is it? Isn't it scary though? It's very, very dark. Yeah, I don't like scary. I don't like dark and scary too. But like, it's I, good. It's disturbing, but good. Okay, really. I hate disturbing. Maybe we'll do the lighthouse. I need to watch the lighthouse. Yeah. I've never seen. I haven't it. seen it either. Mm, maybe. But I, you know, I like. Someone I, I like spoiled Robert it Eggers. for me though, and I'm really angry about it. Don't spoil it for me. I will. Oh my god, I would not do thank, that. Thank you. A, no. a, a woman of class. <laughs> <laughs> well, sweet. Well, cool. Um, well, that's it. I mean, I think we should, why don't we wrap, wrap this up? up? Yeah. Well, you know, that's a little taste of what we're wanting to do in the future. So yeah. well, that's it. Well, everyone, thank you all for joining us. Well, no, well thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Thank so you so much. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, well, thank you for joining, Kat. Yeah. You're going to come on again. Yeah. Yeah. We appreciate you coming. So yeah, be sure to check out our Instagram, our uh, mailbag. At, no, no. Our at Bowtie Movie Lounge. Uh, no, that's it, just it. <laughs> the Bowtie Movie Lounge. And then our email, you know, you can like show su- suggestions. It's just mailbag at bowtiemovielounge.com. And that's it. See you next time. Bye. At the Bowtie Movie Lounge.